Certainly not a lot of quality depth at quarterback. None. They don't have a lot of depth and quality uh, at receivers. So you start taking players out, out of that unit, it's different because they're in year two of a rebuild where they totally flipped the roster compared to NC State where Dave Doran's been there. They've recruited. They've had – you're you get 85 scholarship players for a reason because if you do lose a few guys, you usually can withstand it. Florida State's not at that place. They're at the beginning of this rebuild where they're trying to piece together a roster. So yeah, continuity matters, man. So uh, we see it all the time. Yeah. So to me, I mean, it, it's a you know, a flu would be a problem for any team, but particularly a team like Florida State where they are right now in terms of depth. That doesn't excuse some of the you know mistakes. It doesn't excuse. Well, it doesn't mean that they're above approach, but I mean, I yeah. can say, I can point out that it's a seven point game in the fourth quarter. Right. It's kind of a minor miracle. I, the, I thought Florida State was going to get blown out. I think the thing that when I think about that game and really the last two games and, and moving forward into the the rest of this season and next season is, I don't, yeah, they're not beyond reproach. Like they, they have made some mistakes. I think we can all both, all of us say, Chubba Purdy and Tate Rodemaker were either not evaluated well, not developed well, or both. Well, it's, it's pretty early. They're, they've only been here for a year and a half, and one year was a COVID year. Well, I mean, but you do see other quarterbacks that are their age playing, and this the, either one of them could beat out a one-legged kid that can't throw. So, you know, I mean, at, at some so, point— So they're done, so they're misvalued <clears throat> because they they because they because well, haven't played well two a year. That's ridiculous, man. You can't say that about a quarterback 16, 18 months into their time. I, I, feel, like, I feel like the fact that Rodemaker can't beat out Mackenzie Milton means Rodemaker probably shouldn't be on the roster. It also means Rodemaker's been working with the scout team all season. So I don't know that you just go from scout team all season to running the offense. Well, okay, game. we'll figure out a way to score more than – have, have a better on, plan. Hold on, we're going down this path again. I think they're separate situations. Chubba is not misevaluated. His – his time here began disastrously. He gets hurt within yeah, what? He missed like, oh, almost all of he last year. Everything, and then he has to set back after the surgery, and he leaves the team. He misses all of spring. He misses all of spring. He's not even been here, so I don't know that he's misevaluated. That just started poorly, and it obviously, I think, influenced his decision. I think at that point, he's probably frustrated, no doubt. And then you get to a place where he realizes, well, man, I'm not going to be Jordan Travis out. They're bringing in another kid. Screw it. I'm starting over, and I don't blame him for that. Fine, that's fine. You might be right could about have, could them. Could have used them this past week. Could have, but that's, I mean, look, <clears throat> man, man decided to leave. What are yeah, you going to do? No, I know, but I, I uh, feel like he left because he knew he wasn't going to beat out Mackenzie Milton, which says, I, we it, says more that. about Chubba Purdy than it does Mackenzie Milton. That is correct, but we don't know what happened. I mean, there were rumors that he left immediately following the Clemson game and was not back here to even compete. I think they also, uh, it's the reality of college football now. Kids want to get in the market. Other quarterbacks are getting in yeah. the market. They want to be in the market so that everybody knows they can start having those conversations. As long as they're not in the portal, yeah, you can do some backdoor stuff, but you can't hey really, you can't really <laughs> grief, uh, be recruited and, and have the conversations you want to have, take visits to schools. You know, and he's going to want to be wherever he's going to be by January. That's what I think stinks about this system. We haven't seen mm -hmm. that like this. This year is different where kids are going to the portal with a month to go because mm -hmm. they want to get on the market. Well, and, 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 Rodemaker may not work out. I I think that kid has ability. He definitely does. Something's happened. I don't know. When he's had opportunities, he can't pull the trigger. Uh, that's why he was getting yelled at in that spring game is he would not throw the ball. Right. But it, it could yeah, come but around. He it should be, around. Uh, that was April. I mean, we're in November now. Like, that's seven months later. You would think he would be a better option than a one-legged quarterback. You would think, but apparently Seven not. months later. Apparently and not. he was here last spring. I mean, I know it was three days. But he was he, he's been here mm -hmm. on campus for, whatever, 20 months. Yeah. And he can't beat out a one-legged quarterback that but, can't throw. So, but again, man, so you're saying <clears throat> that's a missed evaluation. You're saying that – Well, they do. They are allowed to happen. I mean, you, you bring in quarterbacks yeah, they that are, but I, it's a little ridiculous to judge that after a COVID year and then part of one season. Well, he's not as good as McKenzie Milton right now. Okay, so what does that mean? Does that mean it's a, it, he can never play at Florida State? My idea is, yeah, probably. Okay, well – I mean, I, I, mean I might be wrong, <laughs> but I, I don't think that they think Tate Rodemaker is a part of their future plans. How do you know that? Because they're, they, they, I just do. I mean, they wouldn't have brought in McKenzie Milton. They're well, going to bring in somebody else. He's a one year guy. <clears throat> I mean, they thought, throat, they're bringing in, sorry, they they're bringing in AJ chance. Duffy. I mean, Tate Rodemaker's not going to probably they start. sign here. quarterbacks. Um, yeah, and you have depth. At the end of the day, I mean, you do sign a lot of guys. Not all of them are going to start. Not all of them are misevaluated. We'll see. Look, Tate is not where I'd like him to be right now. Was uh, So a year ago, you're thinking Kalen Deloach is a miss. Can't ever play. He starts at linebacker for him. Yeah. I mean, yeah. He's good. He well, he's not uh, good. He's their best. He's the so, best. I think what we're getting at, and, and losses bring about the but real he frustration. Wasn't, he's not. He didn't lose his job out to one-legged Emmett Rice. That's all. 
Hold on. Losses bring out the frustration, obviously. And when I watch this roster, and I go back to the beginning of the year, I said this, and I'm right, but I'm wrong about a lot, too. I admit that. When we were watching practices, and you've yeah, seen them yeah. all, we were, where's the talent? Remember that. We said right. that. Where is the talent? They don't have talent. I remember being blunt about it, saying, I really just don't see anybody who can play. Now, that's probably an oversimplification, but I meant by Florida State standards, by a standard. There's not a lot of difference makers. No, there's virtually none. Virtually well, that's none. so frustrating when watching this team. is like, golly, Jordan Travis, me, and you, you guys know I'm the biggest Jordan Travis fan there is. But he means that much to this team. Like well, without right. Jordan Travis, you got no shot. Well, I mean, when you I don't just, have good receivers and you can't pass protect. Sure, that's like you I mean, get some receivers. You, is Portier just not going to be a guy? Is Williamson not going to be a guy again? They've been here for two years now too, and they, they do jack squad. They played in that game and don't do nothing. I mean, so, you, at some point, so they're you all have, missed evaluations. Are they not getting developed? Coaching. Are they not getting well, developed? Or the redshirt well, freshman that had a COVID year last year? They, yeah, all right, and they have not had the opportunity to go. So when is it okay to say that they're not going to be okay, good? I just senior don't think year? you can say definitively right now about almost any of them. I feel like a redshirt freshman that has played for two seasons should be able has to get on the field with guys, this recruited with this with this receiving core. I think that this will be the first class that plays out normally that we've seen them have coming up. They have not been able to take advantage of the early sign. We haven't, I mean, yeah. what a have, nightmare yeah. this has been, right? All the first year coaches that you saw around the country, that first class they signed was terrible. Most yeah. of them were not having success. Then you had the COVID year last year. I knew we were going to get to a place with frustration. I don't mean us three. I just mean in general. You can sense this amongst the fan base because it takes, nobody likes to suck. <laughs> and and nobody wants to sit around and and wait the two to three years minimum that it's going to take to see the kind of progress that they're aching to see. I think that we've seen progress. If you look at, I know people can roll their eyes, but if you look at S and P plus, this is a top fifteen Fimra. team. Fimra, look, look at Fimra. Better, I th all three of us would agree on this. They're yes. a better team this year than last year. 100%. A much better. It's team. It's not right? close. They're making a lot of progress. They're just not where they need to be. And and it's going to be a while. They're not going to be great next year, guys. They're not. I don't think they have the requisite depth of talent to be great next year. Could they be good to average? Maybe. Maybe they could. I mean, it's a down ACC. You can be a seven-win team next year. Yeah, you could do that. We thought coming into this year that because of the transfers they brought in on defense and because of we thought there was going to be much better quarterback play, that six to seven wins was Yeah, six and six. Good, what I said, good goal seven and five, a lot of people. Yeah, we well, did. You, you didn't get good quarterback play. It's just for, you know, McKenzie Milton didn't turn out to be what they thought he was going to be. And Jordan Travis, I think there's a couple of issues there. I think there's the issue of him dealing with the McKenzie and the way the fans cheered yeah. for McKenzie and all that. I don't think that went well. And I also don't think Jordan advanced as much as they thought he was as a passer. So they've had to kind of readjust to what he can do I, well. I think that's accurate. And, I and, really... and they got to a point where they were playing pretty well. They won the three straight games. Then they lose to Clemson, which to me, man, no I, I don't, there. I don't, yeah, I don't blame them on that. I, and then I you, thought, you go into the next game without McKin without Jordan Travis but, and several other guys. That loss was sick. very predictable. And NC State's yeah. a better team. So I, to me, like these last two weeks, I don't know if you won three straight games and you felt pretty good about things. Losing two games, you probably thought you were going to lose even before the season or early in the season for sure. I don't know how that's like, oh, this is the end of the world. This is all a disaster. I don't think it is. I think it's a very vocal minority. Yeah, I, I do think, though, and my point is you are right to criticize that if you lose your starting quarterback, your offense your offense just goes seven out, seven and out in the first half, can't move the ball, only only gets past midfield once. That's where like, they're that's at, That's what though. you got. I mean, that, that is where they're well, at. Well, then again, that's that's part of it is you don't got anything better than McKinsey. But Bills. don't you think the problem is the two years before that they didn't sign a quarterback? Isn't that more the problem than, hey, these two kids you guys signed 18 months ago in a, in one one year was a COVID year. I mean, I that just, those guys are ready I look to around lead you the country, against NC State man. against one of the best defenses in the country. I, okay, I, I look around the country. There are other redshirt freshman quarterbacks in a COVID year that that play and can beat out McKenzie Milton and go into a situation that's a bit better and have better receivers. Like the receivers well, are yeah, not good. But, but these 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 two guys don't have better receivers. I know. And they but have again, this offensive doesn't line. that fall on the coaching staff at some point? And, but some of those redshirt freshmen might be going into a system like Jeff's trying to say that's already established. Like right. it's one thing to play as a redshirt well, freshman right. in a yeah, better yeah. system and yeah. a better like a team that hasn't had three coaches in four years. That's somebody keep I get people bring up Mel Tucker all the time who I think is a great story and you know that's an awesome season they're having. Um Bell Tucker came in, and obviously during the COVID year, they weren't good. And then this, his first real season, if we will, if we're going to judge it by the same thing, they're having a great year, right? And he brought in all those transfers, and they're trying to do the same thing here. That said, 
he wasn't replacing a coach who replaced a coach and then replaced, you know what I'm saying? Three, like yeah, three years. years. When you have three staffs in four years, you're effed. You blow up your entire roster. Think of all the departures. Think of all the people that Willie signed that aren't here or that can't play. Yeah. And then and then you come in and within a month you got to sign the cl- your first class, which really doesn't even hardly count because who are you really getting at that point? You're not getting guys. I mean, you're not going to get. Well, the next players. class was a COVID class, right? I mean, so, I got it. But so they, they don't have good players. They don't, and I think that they're pretty well coached. I think you would agree with that. I do. Well, I don't know. Certain positions might not be very well coached, well, but overall, this. on the whole, yes, I'm they are a well coached team. I think that adjustment at halftime, which leads to this even being a game, is surely a sign of really good adjustments. A really good coaching staff figures out a way to compete in a game in which they have no business competing. Yeah. And Norvell said during the, his coach, he didn't say it to us during the press conference, but Monday night um, on his coach's show, he said basically that they really hadn't even worked on that with the offensive line. Like that wasn't something going with the wider splits and some of the things they did. It wasn't something they've done a lot in practice. No. It was, Hey, let's, let's try to come up. With hey, something. we got to do something. We're getting beat 14 to nothing. We can't move. The so ball. they were surprised. Like they were surprised. They couldn't block NC I, state with I, McKenzie Milton, at quarterback. I think they were. All right. That seems odd to me. Well, I mean, that's what you they do. You have it run on anyone when I McKenzie think, I, I also think there were some opportunities to run the ball, and the running backs didn't play well. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't run hard in that first half. It yeah. didn't seem. I don't. I don't know if we can say that about Trey Sean. What he get two carries, but it didn't seem like Corbin was himself right. in that first half. But also, it shouldn't be a huge surprise that when McKenzie Milton back there, you're not going to be able to run the ball in NC State. Sure. No, no, they, they can't run the ball on anybody if McKenzie's back there, unless it's Notre Dame and they're up by 18 and they decide to play. Yeah. Are you mass? Yeah, or something like that. So that's what that's where you're at. Are we on YouTube now? Are they? Can oh, they we've hear been this? on. Oh, for several, sweet. Uh, oh, yeah. You're welcome, everyone. Yeah, they're good getting, work. They're getting to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Matthew. Oh, Seminole headlines. Ninety-three-three Real Talk Radio War Chant TV continues in a moment. In a moment. When some slithery, slimy something shows up uninvited in my home, I want it gone now. Not next Tuesday. Not tomorrow. Today. Pretty sure I'm not sleeping knowing that thing is crawling around in my house. That's why I call Paul's Termite and Pest Control. Here in Tallahassee, Paul's guarantees same day service if I call before one. Ants, roaches, mice, wasps, fleas, whatever it is, Paul's responds with guaranteed same day service. Pretty sure I've never heard that from any other pest company. Guess that's an advantage to being a locally owned and operated company like Paul's Termite and Pest Control. They're here and make things happen fast. We at Paul's know when you have some pest or rodent in your home, you want it out now. That's why in Tallahassee, we guarantee same day service. You call us before one, we'll be there before five, guaranteed. That's our commitment to you. The health and protection of North Florida friends and neighbors is the reason we love our jobs. For the elimination of termites or any other pests. And a greener lawn, too. Call Paul's. We'll get them all. Learn more at callpauls.com. Hi, Chris Kraft for the Kraft Brothers dealerships. We've experienced a couple of blockbuster months recently. What does that mean to you? It means we have a whole lot of quality pre-owned vehicles. And just when there are rumors about high prices on pre-owned cars, you guessed it. At Kraft Nissan and Infinity, we are discounting every single pre-owned car, truck, and SUV in our lot. Instead of dad dreaming of a new truck or SUV, why not bring him out to the Kraft Brothers lot on Mayhem Drive to look at SUVs and trucks and match what he wants. Kraft pre-owned has dozens of Toyotas, some Ford F-150s and Ram 50. And of course, we have a big supply of Infinity and Nissan vehicles. If we don't have what you're looking for, we will do our level best to find the car you want. Let other dealers charge you too much for pre-owned cars. Kraft Nissan and Infinity are saying, now, right now, is the best time of the year to save on a quality pre-owned vehicle. Kraft Nissan and Infinity of Tallahassee on Mayhem Drive between Academy Sports and Costco. And remember, if the car you are looking for doesn't have the Kraft tag on it, you'll pay too much, way too much. One-third of Americans over the age of 55 have less than $25,000 in savings heading into retirement, and 34% have no savings at all. Maximizing your Social Security benefits is going to be a significant part of planning for the road ahead. If this sounds like you, or maybe even a loved one, give me a call. I can help. I'm Craig Collins with Collins Income Tax Solutions, and I'm offering free consultations to anyone looking to learn how to maximize their Social Security benefits. You can find me online at Collins Income Tax Solutions, LLC.com. If you weren't the owner of Gordo's and all those wonderful restaurants, Eddie, what would you be doing? You know, I, I think I'd want to be a, want to be, I don't know what I'd want to be, a boat captain or a cowboy. You know how to use a, a lasso? No, you'd have to do that if you were a cowboy. Yeah, but I've never even been on a horse. It's not my place to be on a horse. I agree. 
And the horse thanks you. Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. This is Dr. James Ryan Finn from Finn Chiropractic, encouraging you to join us for our fifth annual Healthiest Chili Cook-Off. We're doing this November 10th on Veterans Day Eve to honor our veterans, and we are supporting Wreaths Across America. If you'd like to come and sponsor Wreaths, enjoy some great chili, enjoy some great live music outside, please RSVP as a chef or a taster at finchiro.com. That's F-E-N-N-C-H-I-R-O.com because your chiropractor loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. Life is stressful. Dinner shouldn't be. That motto is why Register Sausage has been doing business in the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. A proud sponsor of Seminole Headlines, Register Sausage always provides the best southern smoked sausage to over 140 grocery stores and restaurants throughout the southeast. Headliners have discovered the Register's difference. You can, too. To find a store that carries Registers near you or to buy directly, head to RegisterMeats.com. That's RegisterMeats.com. Register Sausage. Yay, sausage! Seminal Headlines returns now. Head to YouTube and search for War Chant TV today to catch the show live or on demand. Now, here's Jeff Cameron, Ira Chofel, and Corey Clark. I do think if they're healthy at all going into this game, there's a chance you're in it in the fourth quarter yet again. I know we're setting up for heartbreak. Uh, Miami comes in. Everybody's in it in the fourth quarter against Miami. It, yeah, should, everybody is. Yeah, 33 30 against yeah. Georgia Tech. Have you, have you guys watched them much? Yes, like, I have. Yeah, okay. I went back and watched the last couple of games. And the, man, the, that Miami Georgia Tech game, there should have been the Benny Hill music. Yeah, no. I remember where <laughs> they were turning it over back yeah. and forth. Yeah, the one turnover from Knight where he, he just, just throws, throws it, it to and the guy, guy catches it on a dead run. It looked like a lateral, like they'd worked on it all week. Get on the highlights. No, I know. Hey, look at Khalil. Man. Thank you so much, buddy. Appreciate the contribution to uh, wow, some of the Khalil. Headlines. All right, man. Thank you, buddy. He is a he is a pillar. He has become a pillar of this uh, of War organization. TV. Yeah. yeah, he uh, he writes. We can say fire Dugans, but how long has he gotten to really get some guys in here? Got here in nineteen. Made do with what we had there at wide receiver was solid, nothing crazy. But then he goes into twenty twenty. COVID staff change. He's got some dudes seriously considering FSU now. Well, we were just we were just talking about during the break. Get him. Recruiting is everything right now. I mean, yeah. we, we can talk about adjustments or play calls or whether or not to go for it on fourth down or not, but we're really just kind of spinning our wheels. Hey, it's about players. Hey, go watch. Uh, we were just talking about Miami and, like, watch their offense. Everybody's talking about the quarterback. The quarterback's playing great, and he's got everybody else confidence. But, man, those dudes make catches. Yeah. Like, they go up and make catches, and then they take off when they catch it. Like, there's it's, a, there's it, a couple you, players is what you're saying. When you watch the receivers on that team or some other teams, and now that's a problem. You're going to see them on the other side of the field this Saturday. But you watch other teams, the receivers make plays. It changes everything. I mean, like this offense is, I mean, it is such a slog. Well, the, yeah, Even the, if Jordan's yeah. out there. Well, that is the problem. I mean, they have to be one-dimensional when Jordan's out there. It's the best dimension they have. <laughs> and he is unique at running the football. But, again, that's the, the argument Corey and I have had. I think we're actually more in agreement than we're not. It's it's that even still, even though he does without question give you the best chance to win, doesn't throw it well enough for teams to have to play you honest. And it's a good thing he can run his ass off and make you miss in a phone booth because otherwise this offense does zero. Well, and, down and, mo- <clears throat> and moving forward, what I wonder about again next year is that we can't assume Jordan Travis is going to play 12 games. It never. just ain't happening. It never, it's never not going to happen. No. Who's the backup? Do you have to completely change your game plan? Are you going to make Jordan Travis fit what you want to do? Are you going to fit your offense around Jordan Travis and what he does? Because then when he inevitably gets hurt or sick, what do you do with A.J. Duffy or Rodemaker? But don't you think that's what happened this year? I mean, if we go back to the beginning, I think they thought because of what they'd seen in practice, and this is a misevaluation, I think they really believed he had made the progress as a yeah. passer to where he could. But do I it understand in games. why. I, I we saw those too. practices. I he looked too. so much better. Right, one hundred percent. But they couldn't simulate what it was going to be in games for whatever reason. So you get in games and he's not throwing the ball that way against Notre Dame. Not at all. But you've worked on that offense, and you think McKenzie's gotten through pretty well through preseason. Yeah. He had a couple times where he wasn't feeling great, but I think they're hoping that he's going to get better. Then they get into the season and realize, okay, well that's not going to work. This guy's not as healthy as we thought he was going to be, and this guy's not reading it the way we thought he was going to read it. So now we've got to change it. So you spend the next six, seven yeah. weeks getting better into that offense, and then, and then Travis, Travis goes, goes out, out, and McKenzie. Starts. So I mean, I, I just that's think the, t- that's what I wonder about. And that's next where I year. think Tate might have a shot in. Like you said, if you get into a real, you know, a real offense, I mean, and that's that's going to be the challenge. If that's on these coaches, to your point, you can't go into next season is the, the Jordan Travis show, right? Because it's, that's what it is now. It's all it all hinges on him, and that's I, not because Clemson place took to him be. away. They were done. He didn't play against NC State. There'll they were be done. three teams every year that have the capability of just taking him away, and then you're going to lose those games. 
I, I, I've said this before. I'll say it again. I would get a quarterback in the transfer portal after we get Duffy Everybody on campus. Else, huh? After yeah. we get, yeah. after tell we get AJ, the, yeah. hey, what are you talking about? We're not looking at anyone. Yeah, I'd get You're Duffy crazy? on campus, get him to sign. And I would, if I could find one, if I found one that fits, I'm not just taking anybody. I don't want some rattler. You're not getting a horny, bro. No, if it's, if it's if a I young find a guy. To me, if it's a young quarterback, it's got to be a super duper star to where if AJ says, you know what, cool, I'm out. Then you're okay. Then you're fine. It. You're like, all right, well, peace. If it's not a super duper star, it needs to be a fourth or fifth year guy. Like a right, guy right. that a guy you only get a year yeah, or two yeah, yeah. and maybe good. You're, there's going to be a better chance you have a proven guy for like one year, and you can explain that to Duffy. Look, man, you need to redshirt anyway. Yeah, you, you don't want you to play behind you, this offensive line right now, anyhow. Right, you are going to beat out. You are going to beat out Jordan Travis anyway. So, so redshirt, right. yeah. and then you can play next. No, year. I actually, I, I would do that. I would, and I've said that all year long. I would find somebody in the transfer portal if possible. I mean, it's not always that easy. You can't just snap your fingers and be like, oh, look, we got a guy. I mean, if if the right fit is out there and they want to come, then I would certainly entertain that idea. They've got a lot to do in the transfer portal. Yes, I mean we. we if you're trying to get to seven wins, six wins next year, you need two offensive linemen. You need two wide receivers. You need some linebackers. I don't think, I mean, look, they're close to six wins this year. They're not going to get there, but you know, they lost, what, four yeah. games in the final possession? I mean, they're they're about they're a, a better six, team. They're a six win team that's been a little, not unlucky. Mm. They haven't been unlucky, but they've given themselves they a chance lucky either. To, get, yeah. to get to six wins. They all, I, so it's not like they have to have a. a uh, in an incredible influx of talent just to get to six wins. They are a six-win-ish team right yeah. now, according to our guys at S&P, which is That's what correct. you care about. Yeah, so, 50. I mean, it, it would help if the scoreboard at the end of a game would show them winning it. Well, the cataclysmic mistake that they made that they absolutely could be ripped for was the approach in the Jacksonville State game. If you don't have right. that loss, you're sitting with four wins right now with a chance to get a win against Boston College would be five wins. Who knows? Maybe... Who knows if Florida even wants well, to play? And that's what so that's, I'm, I'm that's saying. We just disaster. keep coming. Yeah. That disaster has really shaped. Yeah, you can't. And, yeah. you can't get mad. Looking back at the season, now that we know what we know now, you can't get mad about losing to Wake Forest. Can't get mad about Notre Dame. You can't get mad about Notre Dame. I mean, those two Louisville's teams are like won. sixteen and Louisville two. should have been a coin toss. You definitely yes. should have played as ugly as you did that the first, first half. That first half was a nightmare. Um, but then you beat North Carolina, so you kind of got it back. And you can't get mad about winning, losing at Clemson. You can be mad yeah. about the way it looked, and you can't get mad about losing to NC State when half your team has the flu and you don't have your starting. Well, you lost as an underdog in both situations. So the, the Jacksonville like, State game kills you. It kills you. And yeah, it was a four, terrible approach and mistake. Be four made five by that right now. Staff. Yeah, and you're allowed to say that. I mean, that's what I'm saying. They're, they've made mistakes, but they're not. That mistake was reprehensible. Do we think they're getting better? Are there ways in which they, we can prove they're getting better? Yes, I think that's true. You'd like the record to be better. We all would. They're not going to get there until they get better players. you got to get the kind of competition in practice where there's a depth of talent going to war every day for the right to play. Hey, I'll tell and you. And they one, can get, what, one, 10 guys in the portal probably? 8 to 10? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. The one thing, and the other They'll thing. get you six starters. And this hit me recently. I thought, I, I think it hit me earlier in the year, but I think I lost track of it. But it hit me again this week. If you get better players, once you get into a part of a program like where you've been recruiting for several years, now you get better looks in practice because your scout oh, team is decent. I, the, Their scout no, team is question. it's terrible. Oof. That defense. I mean, they're not getting any kind of. They a look. get no yeah. look. Like they're probably watching, in shell shock on Saturday. That's what I was, see a real team. I was watching today, and it's like you know, so Geno English is playing the part of quarterback of uh, Van Dyke, which is fine. I mean, he's 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 okay. Yeah. Did he put but, cats man, on and? But, <laughs> but talk the, of the walk around. But you know, you've got a walk on running back playing Jalen Knighton. Gonna be a little different with Jalen Knighton's out there. He's probably there. faster than Jalen Knight. You got walk on walk <laughs> yeah. on receiver. You know, I think it was I can't remember exactly. I think it was a walk on play in the part of uh, Rambo. And I mean, you, well, so yeah. you're not. So you're getting, talking about walk on receiver is not going to be not able to replicate. Rambo. Rambo. Well, think about in 13 when Florida State was getting ready for Auburn. I mean, we know he didn't end up having a great career, but their yeah. scout team quarterback was John right. Franklin, who was yeah. an elite, who was athlete. faster yeah. than Nick Marshall. Yeah. So he gave you the look you needed right. to have. And I think they used Kermit on some scout team it's stuff, too. It's a big point that you're making, because I've talked about this a lot with my dad. He gets so frustrated, and I say... John Franklin the third, I think. I he was the third, right. okay. And I, I say to him all the time, like, Dad, can you imagine? They're not getting anything of a look in practice on a daily basis at all. First of all, their starting offense isn't very good, <laughs> let, well, let mean, alone it's, the, it's, the, the scout know. team offense. You know, I mean... They can't. I mean, that's that's tough. So that's and these receivers thing certainly that, don't match you, up against our DPs in practice right. at all. So as you get through a practice, I mean, as you get further into program, you think that, you know those things get better. Can we hash out fourth and four? Can we? Can, oh, so let's do it again. I, 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 we're gonna do it again. 
just we I got one it. more approach. We did it on Sunday I got one Smash. more approach. We talked about yelling at each other. I got one more approach. I thought you guys agreed with each but other. But you're not really in agreement. Oh, we, I'm not in agreement at all. But so, you guys can we hash agree? it out? Can we hash no. the last next well, thing? I, I've got a, I've got a way that I think I might get Corey to convert. I don't need Corey to convert. He's wrong all the time. I want to, I I just want to keep convert him and the masses. I want Corey and the masses to come over to our They're side. They're never going to come over to your side. What's your stuff? All right. Okay. Let's play out. Okay. Well, we're going to. We're going to do it. Let's tease we're going to oh, tease the fourth oh, and four from the 14-point loss. Hey. More screaming at each other after this. For the seventh time, we are going to bet that fourth and four <laughs> play, everybody. It's coming up next on Seminole Headlines, 93.3 Real Talk Radio and War Chant TV. Oh. Tallahassee businessman J.T. Burnett is scheduled to be sentenced today. In mid-August, a jury found Burnett guilty of five of the nine charges against him. After a month-long trial, Burnett was found guilty of extortion, two counts of honest services mail fraud, one count of violating the Travel Act, and lying to the FBI. According to penalties listed online by the U.S. Attorney's Office, Burnett faces a maximum of 70 years in prison. Scott Maddox, who was sentenced to five years in prison, and Paige Carter-Smith was sentenced to two years. Both will report to their respective detention facilities today as well. The Tallahassee Fire Department says they responded to a house fire in the 900 block of Mill Street Monday morning. Around 11.45 a.m., firefighters were dispatched to an abandoned house where smoke was reported to be coming out of the structure by a passerby. Upon arrival, TFD crews found heavy smoke and some fires showing from the attic. The fire was quickly knocked down and was under control within 10 minutes. No injuries were reported. This is Rachel and A with your Real Talk 93.3 local news update brought to you by Macklemore Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Frobley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Clear skies and quiet this afternoon with a high of 76. Northeasterly winds, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Partly cloudy tonight, lows level off around 51. Daytime highs approaching 75 tomorrow. Partly cloudy skies. Mid-70s, Thursday and Friday. Chance for scattered rain showers Thursday. Chance for scattered thunderstorms Friday. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 74. See Nice Tire and Auto Service at 4792 Bluntstown Highway today. The ASC trained technicians at Nice take the guesswork out of fixing your car. That's why wherever you see the Goodyear sign, you'll find what you want in tires and service. From preventative maintenance to a major overhaul and everything in between, you name it. Plus, Nice's services are backed by a nationwide limited warranty. Stop by Nice Tire and Auto Service. 4792 Bloodstown Highway, just west of Capitol Circle. Life is stressful. Dinner shouldn't be. That motto is why Register Sausage has been doing business in the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. A proud sponsor of Seminole Headlines, Register Sausage always provides the best southern smoked sausage to over 140 grocery stores and restaurants throughout the southeast. Headliners have discovered the Register's difference. You can too. To find a store that carries Registers near you or to buy directly, head to RegisterMeats.com. That's RegisterMeats.com. Register Sausage. Yay, sausage! It's Congressman Michael Waltz on The Greg Tish Show. Good morning, Congressman. How are you doing? Hey, doing well. Again, just what you have to go through day in and day out. I don't know how you have hair left or like Matty Rowe, just completely bald. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And the irony of it all, the progressives are the tail wagging the dogs. This whole bipartisan White House is a joke. Mm. We're just watching them you know, eat their own. The Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. Seminole Headlines is brought to you by Register Sausage, serving the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. To find a store near you or to buy directly from Registers, head to registermeats.com. That's registermeats.com. Seminal Headlines returns now. Head to YouTube and search for War Chant TV today to catch the show live or on demand. Now, here's Jeff Cameron, Ira Chauffel, and Corey Clark. I gotta be careful with this mic. Every time I touch it, I think it's gonna come crashing down. Be freelancing out here. <laughs> All right. So we were talking during the break, and we certainly teased it uh, headed to commercial that uh, we were gonna go back over again the fourth and four decision. Corey doesn't think they should have gone for it. Ira does. I do too. Uh, I don't think any don't of think us are we're adamant like we're this is losing. the absolute right. dumbest thing or this was the absolute smartest thing. 100%, right. Right. 100%. People do love to do absolution. Yeah, that that's not true, right? We don't we're not there. I got my notes out, Iris. Yeah. So go ahead. I, oh, oh, I just want you to know, and there are a multitude of websites to do this, but it's kind of funny. You can go to like for example, rbsdm.com. So, so just so people know, I'm gonna get the backdrop and you pick whatever site you want. There are some that cater solely to college, whatever. And 
when these coaches who use services and also believe in and buy into, you know, analytics as a tool, as a tool for helping make a decision, not ultimately make the final decision. Understand that it's advanced to a place now where it considers an awful lot. It's not just time score distance. There's a lot more involved. They look at yards per play, what you've done up to that point, your overall efficiency ratings, everything. Okay. So just for an example, I pulled one up during the break just to show Corey, because I know he's never looked at anything like this. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So it's got time, quarter, situation, yards to go, minutes left in quarter, yards from opponent end zone, seconds left in the quarter. Whether score, McKenzie Milton's your quarterback. Score di- doesn't have that. Okay. Score, di- <laughs> score differential. Offensive timeouts remaining, defensive timeouts remaining. I love you, Additional McKenzie, seconds. by the way. I appreciate you working hard and playing hard for this team. It's just you're not you're not who you were, but it's not your fault. I, I'm not really trying to take shots at you. Did you did you get the opening kickoff or not? Oh, geez. All right, that's too much. Additional what was seconds your... to run off the clock after successful conversions, and how many successful conversions have you given up on defense? So this factors into whether right, or not you think you can get the ball after... back. Right. So, that's... so it factors all this stuff in. Right. So that, that's – to me, the crux of the whole argument, and the reason I did want to bring it up again is because I do want to flesh it out because what I've heard a lot of is it was an imbecilic decision to go for it. Like, the, the, that it was crazy. The, the, it, this guy maybe shouldn't be our head coach. The actual because analytics of, said you should go for it. And so an let's, let's flesh out what would have happened if they punted, all right? So they're at the 43. They punt the ball. Where does – I'm not saying best case, what you hope, what you, what you fear. About ten, the 10, 10 to 15, I'm thinking. Okay. You could get it 10, down to the one. Could. could, 10, could you 10. also could. If you had an yeah. state spotter. You could also <laughs> punt it out of bounds. Well, Master Mono had a couple good ones. <laughs> I'm just, so, I'm just saying, so that's possible. Or you could have punted it into the end zone and yeah. hit the 20. Man, so I'm I would saying, have been him hitting a 57 can we agree? Yard. Can we agree 10 to 15? Yeah. Sure. Ten to, somewhere in the 10 to 15. Mine's less about where they have it. Probably about 10. So they get the ball. What happens? What's most realistic when NC State gets the ball with eight minutes to go? What do they do on that drive? Is it more likely they go three and out, which they've only done three times in 13 possessions? Or is it more likely that they get at least one first down? I would say probably two. I think in their last, the three drives before that, they had gone three and out. They had gotten one first down and they'd gotten two first downs. But the one that they got a first down on, he had, they actually lost yardage on that drive because of the sacks. Right. So they had gotten in their three previous drives a total of about 29 yards. So the right. drive one, one ended up being a five play and a seven play. Yeah. So one of the drives, they got two first downs and took up four minutes. The other drive, they took up 315, 320, like yeah, yeah. and they got one first down. Yeah. So let's just say they got one first down. So they're, they, so they're punting from the 26. So they're punting from the 26, okay? Now if Thunderfoot. Yeah, but you got – so, I mean, so you you're, got – So you're punting from the 26. Po- pokey, pokey back there. So you're punting from the 26 now, probably with like four, four and a half minutes left. Where do you get the ball? Yeah, assuming prob- you field it. Probably assuming the, yeah. by some miracle of God, your you punt returner the punt. catches probably the punt. Probably the 20, 25. All right, maybe. so if, now – Yeah, and then you got to get – you got to get – you're you not even at the 43 down. yet. So, yeah. All right, so you're – so with four and a half mm-hmm. minutes, four, four and a half minutes left, you're at the 25 or so, and you've got the ball first down. Is that a no-brainer, better decision than no. fourth and fourth? That's why I'm saying that. That's, the, the, that's the, why you're not entrenched it, in the it, argument. But I, the, I think a counter to that is I think Norvell kind of got off the hook a little bit that Akeem Dick gets pancaked. What if Akeem Dick goes if and makes that tackle? Field goal, you're right. If he goes and makes that tackle, they still got the first down. And now you're the game is a basically over because they just had to get one first down to put the game away. That's that's the, the that's, difference. That's, that's the, the count. risk. Yeah. That's the risk. And you do here's, take a risk. It is, he, it's not riskless. He, to me, here's some reward. But it would have been nobody, a 90 yard screen pass if they had run the same play right, right, from yes. the 10. Yeah. But here's some reward. <laughs> there, that's the risk. Here's some reward. If you convert on fourth, you're and at four, midfield. You're at midfield, and you can go tempo. If they punt, you can't go to tempo unless you win first down. Which and they never who do. Knows yeah, and I, I would also down. say, So now, though, if you get that first down, Pokey catches that pass. Jordan Young runs the route right. Pokey catches that pass. You're first down midfield, and you can go tempo. Man, you got a chance. And, and That's all I'm saying. There's risk. And, I'm not saying I think it was the best decision. I just think to say it it's was not crazy. Crazy is wrong. Correct. The extremes of these arguments both are wrong. I, I would also say that. Look, I know some of the counter is, well, you got McKenzie Milton, that quarterback. Well, look, man, you were going to have him no matter what, whether you got the ball back at the 25 well, or point. at the 40. Yeah. You were going yeah. to he, he, have to play with what you have. I, yeah. I think you said on Wake Up, you're like, well, what are the odds, even if they convert, converted, what are the odds they were going to go? Another probably, 50 yards. Well, well, what are the odds better than they go 75? Yeah, yeah you got to hope for a block punt. That's well, what you're trying for. You got to hope for a guy but, missing a tackle or something. But people weird. are, I think people's, the people who are arguing so vehemently assume the defense is going to get a three and out. They're going to get the ball in yeah. the field. 
Man, what based, that's an uh, based on what? That's an assumption. The defense had played well the last three drives. That's what it is. The, the last drive, it ended with two Kier Thomas sacks. So you're feeling good about what the defense has done. But as it turned out, the defense yeah. gave up a long pass. What, what confounds me, though, when it comes to his decisions is, if you go to your little chart right there, mm -hmm. aren't you probably supposed to go for it on fourth and one from your 36 in the fourth quarter when you're down by seven? He didn't then. Right, and, which shows he's not a slave and to that, those metrics. But that, what's weird about that is that play, Cam McDonald's wide open and Parchment's wide open on the other side. Like, if, if I don't understand what you well, saw think, in that third and I one think, that you didn't want to go for it on fourth down. Then I think the I think the reason you and he says as much the reason he he's felt, worried about possession. Yeah, he's worried about he might only get Correct. the ball one more but he, time. But he also in the first half he went for it on fourth and one at, at his own thirty four. So there doesn't seem to be a lot of rhyme or reason of him. It oh, seems I don't like, think, but I don't. You don't more believe feel. you're not asserting. Well, there may be some feel, there's but you're feel. not asserting that it's a haphazard. Ah, uh, what the hell? Let's no, but do he, it. But it's again, he had flip. he had four fourth and ones that he didn't go for it, and then he all around the same barrier, and then he had one that he went for it. So I think what would be interesting, and uh, he probably doesn't want to get bogged down into that. Maybe minutiae, three fourth. But and I, ones. I, I, I know would, they punted yeah, three wasn't. times yeah. on fourth and one. I they would punted. like to ask. I mean, it would be great. He, he asked him what goes into the decision. He said it's right. it's the analytics, but it's also feel. Right. And, and I would have loved what though, they need at the game. In a perfect situation, you could sit down and say, where, where he knows you're not coming at him from a standpoint of, of being critical, but rather wanting to know. And and you where you could say, all right, let's take me through the thinking on that play and why you punted here and why you didn't. I'll there. say the easier thing to do. The easier thing to do is, is to, punt. to punt because you don't get questioned. Right. I mean, he's playing to he's win the game. Trying he's to trying win to the win game, the but like, game. and people are then mad at him for doing. But yeah, people, people want to be mad. But people also have, uh, uh, they they have the right to be mad if they sure. if they don't think that's the right decision. No, no I'm just saying, saying, but think it through and don't assume the best case was going to happen if it went your way and the worst case happened the other way. Right, but it, it also if, it's imagine, hindsight. Imagine they don't recover the onside kick. Okay, because yeah. they don't get the onside kick. Yeah. <laughs> now they've got the ball with a short field. They go twenty-one nothing. Yeah. People are gonna be like, "What the hell? Why are you would doing? you do that? Why, you had why are you always taking these crazy risks? You, you, you know, nobody nothing. recovers onside kicks. Why yeah. would you do exactly. that? Exactly. They haven't recovered an onside kick in twelve years. Yeah, but that was the is, right decision. Yeah. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, Two thousand nine. I mean, people don't recover onside kicks. It's rare. Why? Well, so, Florida State doesn't really even kick. No, they no. Don't. But that's a little roll of the, the dash uh, right there, baby. I wonder what the game was. Did you look that up? What was the game? I they don't know. They covered somebody, an onside kick. 2009, they should have done it every Probably game. Probably South Florida. I, I, know but I think in 2009, we used to say they should do it every yeah, game. Yeah, because then they would the only be a 40-yard drive. <laughs> but I would also say to you that uh, by doing that, by kicking that onside kick, which statistically speaking, they probably should not have done, but they chose that they, want, they wanted to go for a spark. They got it. The only reason this is a game yeah. is because of that decision. You're playing to win the game, man. And sometimes that leads to getting blown out, by the way. And when you when you try to do that, you could get blown out because the severe repercussions for not succeeding but in I, that risk. I think and as we move forward, if this program gets to the place, if they we get hope better players, does, he's not gonna have to incessantly that's do this. What I, but I, I I just want a better understanding of his fourth down map right, well, well, because then, he, he, there was there were three times. Hey, buddy, where I'm he gonna went, give you the chart. No, I want no, you to study this but tonight. He, Clearly, there were three times he did not go for it on fourth. But we one. don't know what this chart says. There was it, not plug yeah, in mean, the every, numbers. Buddy. All those other variables affect. Yeah, you know, everything I mean, is affected. Time, distance, so score. They, the drive before, literally the drive before the fourth yeah. and four, they had a fourth and one yeah, around yeah. the same area. They didn't go for it. I feel like you have a much better chance but of picking up. He's one, but there's less possessions yards. at the time that he chooses to go for it. He's now worried that NC he's got State one more possession. Hey, during the break. Plug in my I'm scenario. I'm going to plug in your scenario. and see if shut it the says, hell up. It says if you, what the probability was. 93.3 Real Talk Radio. War Chat TV continues in a moment. Every night at the Corner Pocket, take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays and kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. Siri, tell me a joke. The past, present, and future walk into a bar. It was tense. All jokes aside, the trained professionals at Mac and More Systems are serious about Apple products. For all your Mac repairs, call Mac and More Systems at 894-3622. 894-3622. 
The weather is unpredictable and can cause issues around your home. Weston Treywick provides commercial, residential, and industrial electrical wiring services, yearly inspections on fire alarms, portable generator sales, and so much more. With 24-7 emergency service and repair, Weston Treywick will be your calm in the storm. Give them a call at 514-0003. Weston Treywick, professional electrical services day or night. Visit online at westontrewick.com. This holiday season, it's more important than ever to show some love to our local businesses when tackling your shopping lists. Real Talk 93.3 and the Office of Economic Vitality want to encourage everyone to think local first before you click that Shop Now button from the Big Box website. Instead, consider checking out some of our very own local businesses like Lowly and the Bean, packed with unique gifts like home decor, jewelry, women's apparel, and customized gifts for any occasion. Early's Kitchen, featuring fresh, made-from-scratch, honest, good food, served family style and packed full of comfort. Red Eye Coffee with locally roasted coffee, high quality teas, hand blended cocoa and house made artisanal chocolates and pastries. And Trip Drop Fitness, an exciting place for women in Tallahassee to have fun with a rewarding physical workout and feel confident in high intensity cardio and group fitness classes. Tis the season, the season to love your local. Find a full list of participating local businesses to love at oevforbusiness.org. That's oevforbusiness.org. Choose hearth and patio for custom fireplaces, maintenance, outdoor grills, kitchens, fire pits, lighting, and so much more. Check out all of hearth and patio's options online at hearthpatiotallahassee.com. Hearth and patio, they keep the home fires burning. Many orthodontists in Tallahassee can straighten a smile, but at Birch Orthodontics, they're dedicated to providing the finest care possible. The experienced and friendly staff is trained in all of the latest techniques. So whether you need standard treatment like braces or Invisalign, or you have a more complicated case requiring extra attention, Birch Orthodontics is here for you. Set up your free consultation today by visiting birchorthodontics.com, B-U-R-C-H orthodontics.com, or call 850-877-1692. At Birch Orthodontics, they create beautiful smiles that last a lifetime. Seminal Headlines returns now. Head to YouTube and search for War Chant TV today to catch the show live or on demand. Now, here's Jeff Cameron, Ira Chofel, and Corey Clark. That's us. We got to talk. Time. Here we go. Uh, thanks, Mark. We appreciate the contribution. He writes, beat Miami. Any ideas for pranking my UM fan neighbor without committing arson? <laughs> well, it doesn't have to be arson, right? Um, I don't know. You could. What's the. Uh... You flame well because you can flame the poo and have them st- stamp, stamp that out. out. That's an old. That's one, old right? time. That's from my childhood. I mean, I think you just got to bring up like you got to tell him that there. You just heard on the radio that Nevin Shapiro <laughs> has actually moved into a house with T- Tyler Van Dyke. Yeah, and yeah. They're, they're starting to look into it. <laughs> and there's an investigation just a this little week. Checking around here. Yeah. Uh. Well. So. Do we? One thing I will say about this week, Florida State Miami. I woke up depressed on Monday and I'm depressed today because this was for me and I think any Florida State fan or Miami fan listening for that matter for the longest time, the epicenter of college football. It was this game. Yeah. It was always the nervous feeling you got in the pit of your stomach as a knoll, and I'm sure the Canes got it too, before these two monsters used to go, you know, 22 guys on the field all playing in the league someday. You know, that was, and I was thinking back as uh, Gene Williams asked us to put forth our favorite two videos. Yeah. Or favorite four, plays, plays, favorite plays. Yeah. That he's going to try to find the videos for that. We can do a video for, but the point was, I was like, there's so many to choose from so many great moments, good and bad with that rivalry. But I, I, one of the ones I chose was uh, Charlie to Matt Fryer because I was at that game in the student section and I was there with eager anticipation and, and what an intense battle that was. And then seeing Charlie scramble to his right. And I can remember seeing Matt Fryer come open. And thinking, I, you know, I hope he gets it to him and then he runs away, which is yeah. amazing. I, like, those moments were so intense and so exciting. And this game is an afterthought nationally right now, and it's an afterthought amongst the fans right now. That's where I'm sad. I am really sad that that's the place these two programs find themselves in, where this game, which was the best football game in all of college, is irrelevant. It's an irrelevant game. Is there any chance there's a decent crowd? Well, judging by last week, no. Or the week before. But or the week before that. I brought it up on Wake Up War Chant. Explain to me why South Carolina gets 71,000 fans at that game when they're 4-4 four and, four and are coming off a 44-14 to 14 loss to a and And it's South Carolina, who's won Jack Poo in our lifetimes. Yeah. They suck. They've always sucked. 
they're a, they're talk about an afterthought. That no, is the they ultimate have some of the best, afterthought of a program. They have the, some of the best fans in football. They're, without question, they're well, the street. Can Florida State fans kind of try to. Uh, uh, well, now we get secondary stuff there to get into. Well, they're, right. They're, I don't want. We don't have to do that. But can they? Can they aim to be as good as South Carolina fans, sure, football fans? Sure, maybe. No, but they've actually South Carolina fans in a sense. It's crazy. They've been this way of, forever. Right. Because of what you're describing, have long been the envy of many programs. It's always been like. Why do people continue to support that ass sorry program? Yeah, they, they like, seventy one. That was a real home field well, advantage they go in that nuts. game. Yeah, they care deeply about their sorry ass program that's going to go out and lose eight games every year. <laughs> yeah, what I keep reminding myself about this situation for Florida State is it's not just about like Mike Norvell's tenure because that's um, you know because that to me is like if you look at last year to this year we've all seen a lot of improvement. They play hard. They play the right way. I mean, there's there's a lot to like about this team right now other than the record. But the problem is it's not just these two years. And so you've been yeah, – the culmination been, of frustrating year yeah, after year. After four, year. five, six yeah. years of just bad football, and it's and it just erosing. And then also a COVID year, which affected some people's habits and how – No, you're going to have to get out. better players. You're going to have to win yeah. some games. We'll see it turn around. It's just going to take a while. It'd be cool if this was a good atmosphere, though. It won't be. It would be cool if it was, It would though. be great. Yeah. It would be great. And and I miss it dearly. And I'm, I think – I have a feeling this is going to be the most depressing of the years. Even though I knew what was about to happen to Willie – and that team, when Miami came to town, that ultimately in the game, that I think yeah, in addition to some other it. stuff, got him fired. Um, I, you know, this is, to me, it's so depressing because it, it is a winnable game if Jordan Travis is healthy and you can run the ball. Miami doesn't, isn't interested in tackling people. They haven't been this oh, year. Man, their defense uh, at one is point, so bad. At one point, they were last in the country in tackling. Well, let's talk about this game a little bit because I do think, you know, in going back and watching some of Miami's games, I mean, the quarterback's the real deal. Corey's been talking him up now for two weeks. Mm. I've been kind of like, well, we'll see, we'll see. Now, he's definitely the real deal. Their skill's really good. Their offensive line, they'll max protect to help him out if they need to. But here's the one the one variable, the one thing I think that should give you hope. Well, two things. One is, to your point you just made, I think Florida State's offense, if Jordan Travis is healthy, which he appears to be practice Tuesday, I think he'll be full go this week. If he and the offense can run the ball, which they should be able to, that Miami defense is, is bad. They don't tackle. They're not physical. It's not a good defense. So that that's one thing. The other thing is, this kid hasn't really gotten a big pass rush. He hasn't had to deal with a much of a pass rush. Georgia Tech's pass rush is awful. Uh, Pitt's got a pretty good pass rush, but their secondary was not any good. Um, the uh, who's the other game? The last the other game, the NC State. They, NC State's a good defense. They max protected a lot, and he had some big plays. So I just I think if they can get pressure on him now, let's let's see. I mean, that, that makes things. We'll see. I, if he can just take a five step drop. And get the ball out of his you're hands. Get killed. You're in deep trouble. Would well, also be cool to have a. He hasn't played in front in of an a hostile atmosphere. Yeah, it he be, hasn't. It would be nice to see that. I don't think he's going to have to play in a hostile atmosphere in this game. Uh, we only have two minutes left in the hour before we get to headliner questions. But just this is just crazy. Here's Miami, going back to September 30th. They lost to Virginia 30 to 28. They lost to North Carolina 45 to 42. They beat NC State 31 to 30. They beat Pitt 38 34. They just beat Georgia Tech 33 to 30. This is insane. Yeah, every like game. they are really now. If you think about this, their two losses there are by a combined five points. They could be five and zero in conference right now. Yeah, but they also like could have lost every one of those like games. They could be over in yeah. conference right now. It's insane. Yeah, every single game. Yeah. By the way, do you think uh, Renegade had the flu on Saturday? I didn't see the somebody he, he didn't even it, rear up. Somebody's like, saying it maybe it was tired. a different one. Like, and Stephanie, yeah, Stephanie Stephanie's like, was. what was oh, wrong with the I know horse? You always watch closely. Well, he's and had I, a career year. He's yeah, been, been the best, one of the best of all time. Yeah, maybe the best of all time. It's been he an gets incredible lost in the shuffle. And then he runs out, doesn't rear up, at and all. then he's not on the sideline at all the rest yeah, of the game. He, he might have been a different horse. Yeah, I think the, the speculation on the message boards has been that it was a different horse. The other <laughs> the other one was ill or whatever. Maybe yeah, the, had so the the everybody sitting around here. I didn't and know it spread to horses. That one, was, God, that, that one was spooked by the crowd and the fireworks and everything. They were like, well, that's it. Get him off the field before he kills somebody. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, maybe right. that's why they lost. Headliner questions forthcoming. Stay with. We'll be back in a moment.
up next, more of the Jeff Cameron Show, live and local on Real Talk 93.3, WVFT, Greta Tallahassee. Breaking news this hour from townhall.com. I'm John Scott. The Democrats' tax and spend bill is headed for a rocky ride as competing factions put on the finishing touches. Bob Agnew reports. What Republicans originally blasted as a $3.5 trillion Democrat wish list has shrunk now to about half its original size. That's left Democrats fighting amongst themselves to preserve differing priorities. The battles include disagreements over both the size and scope of a final bill. House Democrats have yet to finalize their own version, one that's certain to undergo major changes once it reaches the Senate. Once it's revamped there, the bill would have to be passed again by the House, all as Congress faces a December legislative pileup. Bob Agger reporting. Also at townhall.com, Republican Chris Sununu announcing he'll seek a fourth term as New Hampshire governor and will not run for the U.S. Senate against Democratic incumbent Maggie Hassan. The Houston police and fire departments were deeply involved in safety measures. For that music festival where a surging crowd killed eight people. Now the city's police department is leading the criminal investigation into how the deadly chaos erupted during a performance by rapper Travis Scott. Houston Fire Chief Samuel Pena on NBC's Today Show says Scott could have tried to stop the show. The artist, if, if he notices something that's going on, he can certainly pause that, that uh, performance, turn on the lights and said, hey, we're not going to continue until... So this thing is resolved. The event was attended by some 50,000 people in Houston's Astrodome. The leader of an effort by Central American migrants to walk across southern Mexico says the group will now head to the U.S. border. The change of plans reflects the group's desperation. They got a cold welcome when the Oaxaca town of Chauhitz initially refused to let them enter for fear of spreading COVID-19. On Wall Street, the Dow is down 224 points and the Nasdaq off 136. More at townhall.com. Hi, I'm Nick. And I'm Adam. We started Legacy Box so that family memories would be safe and could always be enjoyed together. And this year, we're offering you early access to our incredible Black Friday sale so you can finally digitize your home movies and photos. One million families and counting have trusted Legacy Box to convert their aging media because Legacy Box is safe simple and affordable from fading over time to risks like fire and water damage your videotapes film reels and photos aren't protected unless they're on a digital format and with the holidays approaching don't wait simply fill your legacy box and we'll take care of the rest this is the first time we've offered black friday savings this early and it's the most meaningful thing you can do this holiday season it's time to relive your most important memories and take advantage of legacy box's best sale of the year Visit LegacyBox.com slash LBOX to get early access to our Black Friday sale. That's LegacyBox.com slash LBOX for an irresistible deal. LegacyBox.com slash LBOX. If you weren't the owner of Gordo's and all those wonderful restaurants, Eddie, what would you be doing? You know, I, I think I'd want to be a, want to be, I don't know what I'd want to be, a boat captain or a cowboy. You know how to use a, a lasso? No. You'd have to do that if you were a cowboy. Yeah, but I've never even been on a horse. It's not my place to be on a horse. I agree. And the horse thanks you. Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Live in living color and totally free, subscribe to WarChant TV on YouTube, the digital home of WarChant.com. From the practice field to pregame and the phone calls afterwards, WarChant's YouTube channel is home to live programming like Seminole Headlines, Wake Up War Chant, The Jeff Cameron Show, as well as Trench Talk, a live Q&A with Knowles offensive lineman Devontae Love-Taylor. Just search War Chant on YouTube and click or tap the subscribe button. That's it. It's totally free. War Chant TV on YouTube. Just another reason we're the ultimate Seminole sports source. Seminole Headlines is brought to you by Register Sausage, serving the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. To find a store near you or to buy directly from Registers, head to RegisterMeats.com. That's RegisterMeats.com. It's time for Seminole Headlines, featuring Warchant.com's Jeff Cameron, Managing Editor Ira Chauffel, and Senior Writer Corey Clark. More weekly dose of all things FSU, Pistols and Pies starts right now. Here's Jeff Cameron. Hour number two, Seminole Headlines, 93.3 Real Talk Radio and Warchant TV. It is great to be with you. There's Corey mugging for the camera, as always. If you're watching on Warchant TV, there's Ira to my right. He's not mugging for the camera. Why would he? Doesn't need to. Doesn't need it. <laughs> I don't have as much to work with. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, you got this. You got a mug. 
So uh, this hour brought to you, as always, by Birch Orthodontics. You should, couldn't you shave on a headlines day? Like that was, that was, uh, what's his name? I don't, um, I don't appreciate that at all. Just ask uh, that's him. why I'm wearing the hat though. I didn't want people to see my, okay. my, my ring around my head. Cause you know, when you don't shave, you get that ring. You but, don't have much of a ring. Come on, man. I got plenty you're, of you're a ring. You're pretty bald. There's hair yeah, for days. You know. <laughs> I wanted to grow it. It looked great. Oh man. So Birch Orthodontics, whom, uh, who I should say, uh, just informed me that, uh, my youngest son is about ready to start Uh-oh. his braces. Well, and Stephanie's daughter months. just got her braces off nice. yesterday and couldn't be happier. Like was almost in tears. They looked so good. That was a great tweet. Stephanie said they were perfect. They like their, her teeth that was are, are perfect. Yes. So it's the weirdest thing. I, of course, saw Stephanie and her daughter the last time I was in virtual right. orthodontics, and which she, was she thought to get she them was going to yeah. get them off. And then yesterday, Clark was there. My youngest son was there. Oh, man. The y'all just, y'all are on the we are on the exact same You got the same cycles. Here. Dr. Burke's got up. us regimented the right yeah. way. Yeah. But yeah. People, find uh, Stephanie on Twitter. Find her. That picture that she tweeted was uh, really good. I mean, her, she's got, a, obviously, a lovely young daughter. But uh, her smile was perfect. And that's just the same as mine are. And, and yours will as well. Yeah, and, yeah. And you can have that, too, for your kids or your family members. Virtualorthodox.com is the website uh, to get a consultation. They've got payment plans. They do unbelievable work. Great customer service. Best in the business. Ride or die. Virtual Orthodontics. Well done. All right. So uh, BC Knowles 16 wrote this on the board, I guess. Did you Tom get this Langford. by regular mail? Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I'm glad you got that, though, because, yeah, because we, we take questions on Twitter. We take them on Facebook. We don't usually like think to look to the travel council but we need to but we need to and this was one of those from there this one's from okay. there. all right so what would it take to see jeff and ira do an irish car bomb on the sunday smash i didn't include Corey because i know he's too weak yes huh. correct bc Knowles. i mean so, we know what a production it was for me to just get tequila yeah and, and you did do glasses. the shot though you did do it yeah but, but like a man but i don't have supplies like i'm well, gonna go hire a bartender yeah i could do a I mean, maybe we'll do one of these Sunday smashes on location okay. from somewhere. We could do it from the corner. I mean, what would it like take is the right. answer. They need oh, to beat much. one I, of these I, rivals. I, no, I would just do one. Oh, like well, it. it takes nothing, then, it apparently. It takes just nothing. Take, as long as you're alive yeah. on Sunday. I will well, do a Sunday. I, I, will do a, I don't, I don't know that I've committed. I need to hear a little bit more about the ingredients. <laughs> They're but, delicious. Uh, but uh, I am I am half Irish, but my mom's Irish. Let's go, baby. Do Let's, you an Irish accent? What would it take to get you to do an Irish accent? And dye my hair red? For a whole show. Here we go. All right, Eric writes, first off, kudos to you gentlemen for not quitting on us. Yeah. The three of you remain hashtag rock ass solid in my book. I agree, I agree with Jeff. This staff is working miracles given the level of talent we collectively have on this team. But I do have one question for those who get to see practice. Does McKenzie Milton become the incredible Hulk playing waste to defensive tackles and linebackers as he plows forward on short yardage <laughs> and goal line situations to convert? Yeah, because, you should you should see him in practice running that quarterback sneak. Because if he somehow is pulling that off in practice, <laughs> they forgot to shoot him up with the necessary gamma radiation on Saturdays so he can replicate it during the games. It's the one thing this staff keeps doing that leaves me scratching my head. So, and I said it during we, the we break. We talked about that during the break. That yeah. is a very fair point it and is a very fair criticism. Ridiculous. And something we all first guessed. McCoy and I sit next to each other in the press box. Well, this week, Austin was between us. But as soon as McKenzie went back under center, we're like, what the? They, what can't, they, be a what we, they can't be doing this. It's got to be a handoff because Corbin be was back there. I would rather Brady run a QB sneak. I agree with that. Or, or well, your I, wife. I Well, I don't know about that. Well, Brady's got a little more yeah, leg, got a little leg bit strength. strength yeah. Probably, yeah. Christy could definitely do it. She's got I'm strong just, legs, but, but, but her ankles are shaking. The point is, all of them would have this. <laughs> all of them would have the same chances of scoring as Mackenzie Milton. Right. Right. I mean, there's none. It's so, none. Yeah. And the last time they tried it, he it was, fumbled into it was the end zone. Ridiculous. The last time it was it even feels, more ridiculous. It also feels like a humiliating thing for him. Like when I watched it, I'm like, oh man, that's terrible. Like he, he should have been, he should have been like, like, really, we're gonna do yeah, that? Yeah, he's like, guys. I mean, I get. <laughs> no, Why are you should've. making fun of me? Why are he we doing this? Yeah, what, what did I do to you guys? What, what, you want me to dance? I'm like, <laughs> stop doing this, guys. I, let, let me just turn and hand it to somebody. Or just say, just Sean, come under center and get this snap and, and drive. I thought they were gonna do it with Preston Daniel. And what's crazy? Yeah, well, no, you're right. That that play. Well, I thought it looked like he was in motion to like take the quarterback snap. Yeah, it's like okay, well, that makes more sense than this. What's it with? It's interesting about that game, and again, kind of what leads to the the fact that maybe shouldn't have even been in it as it was. NC State's like run defense and their goal line defense, their red zone defense has been outstanding. They'd only given up one rushing touchdown all year. Yeah. So when they got down there and they didn't, you know, they were going to score from three yards out. I'm thinking, man, this is they're going to have. To, there's no way they're going to. But score. then they thought, well, they, we'll just let McKenzie. Let, hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Tom right serious question they'll never expect this they'll they did ne- have the element of surprise that's true yeah. like Dave State Doran, been like my god and his coordinator like i don't know what they're doing coach but it, it looks like be. milton's still under center but that <laughs> can't be right there's no way they're actually going to do that <laughs> tom right serious question how are we doing with the nil and is there a quote focused effort by the university and some of the boosters as to what needs to be done this offseason well let's hope so tom now, I, I'm. It's a I'm, good question, and it's a fair question. I'm a little worried about the NIL. Yeah, I, I am, am too. I am. I'm worried about it. Well, the um, the reality is, I mean, just because that law is in place doesn't change the fact that Florida State, as an organization community, does not have quite the same support as some of the, some of the well, schools get, you're competing get against. Get to it, guys. You're watching the show. Get to it. You know people that have businesses. I mean, like I remember when 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 Jimbo got here. I remember talking to some of the people on his staff about LSU. And the things yes. they had in place there. Oh, yes. Well, but even the above I, I board, did too, by even the, the above, <laughs> what even some of the above even the board, above stuff, board yeah. stuff, like yeah. they had a program where in the summer, like if kids wanted summer jobs, players wanted summer jobs, then they had them hooked up with good jobs, like wearing a shirt and tie, being in an office, making real money, not you know cutting grass. And now you don't even have or, to bother with that. Well, let's go. Exactly. But but they had they had a thing set up where all these businesses around Baton Rouge and New Orleans would guarantee these like, they didn't even want work done they yeah. just guaranteed them good jobs as part of the experience of playing at lsu florida state's never had any of that so you create this situation with the nil where you there's less barriers but florida state still has the same infrastructure and so so to his point it's a top priority i've heard david coburn talk about it i've heard norvell talk about it i've heard the board of trustees chair talk about it but until people step up i don't know if well and no, we, we both we all know this this almost goes without saying but we've made so much money for registers and Birch, especially. Yeah, we know they'll step up. That they, they will step up. And the money that we made for them goes to, say, a Travis Hunter or somebody like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Again, who well, you want a 19 year old to be a spokesperson for North Adonis, right? Ben, ben or a sausage, a big sausage company. Or a car company, company ben, or whatever. Ben, yeah. Ben actually asked me, Ben the sausage guy actually asked me if, uh, if he could tweet at a, a certain recruit. And let them know that hey man, hey, there a, might be some opportunities might be something for you over here. And I was like, I don't know, you're like yeah, go in. The answer is yes. You get up in those DMs. <laughs> you get you slide all the way up in them DMs. That yeah, is the yeah. one nil law you're not allowed to use as a recruiting. Oh, you can't. So. We're not worried man, about I the thought, law. Don't do that. We're not. There's no the NCAA isn't doing. What anything are they doing? Anybody They're these toothless. Days. They're they do got anything. nothing. You hey Ben, you and anybody else with money, you call these recruits and get them on board. <laughs> Let's go. But you, call them. This team needs call them. You don't need a written. No written. No. You don't write a check. Yeah. Don't do what your boy did at Georgia. Yeah. Yeah, he's writing a money order to team. Tony Cole. Yeah, that was good. Norm, Norm Sloan staff did that too back in the day. Just uh, wrote uh, checks. Florida, yeah. Uh, Kenny smart. McCraney got money orders sent in his name. That's my favorite. To give to players. Yeah, I think Kevin Brown, the pitcher from Georgia Tech and then later, of course, Major League Baseball for a mm-hmm. long time, had steroids sent to his house. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. On the yeah. box. Like Kay Brown. Yeah, it was the best. <laughs> Kay Brown, <laughs> Cy Young. My man. 2004. There you go. He was, there's no shame in his game. He's like, bring me all the steroids. Yeah. All right, Mike writes, for the massive limitations Norvell and Dillingham have to deal with and still produce points, rushing yards, and scheme some explosive plays, imagine what they're going to do if they actually have talent. Yeah, that's yeah, the next now, step. I, that, well, you got to get the talent. That's also part of the coaching, yeah, right? you got to procure that's the That's probably, talent. you say, almost the biggest part Just, of It is the biggest part. But when you guys were talking about the FSU-Miami series and you guys were looking back oh, at some of the greatest man. plays, take, like, the, the last starting receiver on any of those teams. Yeah, the, like – I mean, even yeah. like even in 2013, like, I mean, we love Kenny Shaw. Put yeah. Kenny Shaw on this team. Oh, it's different. I mean, it's different. I don't, yeah. So I'm not saying you have to go out and have it hurts Rashad soul. and Kelvin Benjamin, but if you can just go get the third or fourth, go get, get the- you a Christian Green. <laughs> <laughs> right? He's no, a national champ. No. <laughs> what? He was. He made what? a player too. Wasn't I think he the one to... running routes for Jameis on Pro Day and then he plowed into that back? Oh, he did. He that did. was he the hurt. best of all time. Did he get hurt? Well, I think I he, think he took hurt. a cameraman out. I just yeah. remember laughing my ass off inside the. Was that when Jameis had to throw over the brooms and the, yeah. the oh, leaf blowers? Awesome. If you forget, though, that's a deep fly. He throws yeah. that like 65 yards in the indoor network. Yeah, in the indoor practice facility. They had like the TV. Mike Mayock goes flying. No, they all moved that yeah. away. Just bam, 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 bam. They took out everything. I was like, whoo, hell of an overthrow there. James, <laughs> James, got, trying to it. James got into that one. <laughs> yeah, no, I, we're, we're hoping. We're hoping. Tony writes, what's up, sausage lovers? As far back as this past spring, everyone knew what kind of team we are. And because of that, people said that we would probably go five and seven, six and six. So far, we are on track. Why is there so much anger when we knew what this roster was? I don't you think yeah. that's a vocal minority? Though? I do. I think I, the I, people I talk to out in life, 
about this team are all very pragmatic. I, that was definitely the case after Clemson. I got some other but people. But that doesn't make coming. sense because of the I flu. Agree. I agree. But like if they, if no, they, not lost, even because of the flu. NC State's better. Well, right. But well, if you, if you'd have gone out and and with Jordan Travis at quarterback and not gotten a point in the first half, yeah, you, you would been. have a right to be. But like, we what also are y'all know doing? that wouldn't have happened. Uh, right. So that's what I don't understand. Is like with a flu ridden team think, without your quarterback, what were you expecting to happen? It's a bad break. It sucks, but it happened. They had the flu. I think there's so many like things out there that people are grabbing onto to be mad about because they're frustrated. But why'd you let Chubba Purdy leave? Because you you weren't going to play him over Mackenzie Milton. So then that's frustrating. Then there's well that goes back to he's Chubba's terrible and they did a terrible right. job about the it. They could have Jeff Sims here. <laughs> they would hey they would have scored some points with Jeff Sims on Saturday. Yeah, for both, he can run for both teams. Hey, it's teams. fine. He's not fine. A great he's player, exciting. Man. Don't even do he's that. Exciting. He's, he's not exciting. A great player. Yeah, he no. would have gotten that first down on that play that Milton dove a yard short. If we'd oh. gotten down there. No, I'm, no, not the QB sneak yeah. one in the first half where he just came up a yard short. No, he does put up yards and points, but, man, he also – Yeah, he's, he's tough it away, baby. He's a tough watch. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway. Okay, let's keep it – But, yes, the, but it's, there's, it's, like, a lot of different things. But and then the, the season has kind calls. of played out like we thought. They're, they're, they will end up being probably 4-8, and eight, maybe 3-9. and nine. Let's hope that doesn't happen. But 4-8, 5-7, 3-9. and nine. They're a six-win-ish team that didn't win in the fourth well, quarter. I, I think Brad's question here actually kind of does summarize the the mounting frustrations and the uh, extreme emotions that we're seeing. All right. He writes, is this the craziest season ever for expectations? We go in thinking five and seven, maybe six and six. Then we're 0 and four with an FCS loss thinking, yeah. oh my, one and 11's on the table. Yes. Then we figure some things out a bit and think, oh, maybe we can go six and six, maybe even seven and five, who knows? Now we're resigned to possibly going three and nine, yeah, maybe four and eight. Yeah. Can you ever recall a season where the no. expectations fluctuated so much? Think about the quarterback situation. Well, even after the Two first game, ago, you, you lose yeah. a, an overtime Notre Dame. Like, oh, this might be a seven or eight win team. But think about like after after the Notre Dame game, Mackenzie Milton gets to start against Jacksonville State. The crowd goes crazy. Yeah, I mean, people are in St. ESPN sp- sending game day here. I mean, it's a huge story. Everybody's so excited. Now people are waiting with bated breath, hoping that Jordan Travis practice today. I mean, that's, it's just it's, wild what this season has been. The roster is lacking. The roster is lacking, and uh, it's frustrating. And when you when you see something where you say, well, they could just do this, well, sometimes they can't just do that. I mean, they don't have the personnel for but it. But it is crazy. This has been the kind of the wildest roller coaster of right. them all. Like, this is nuts to be like, they're on four. They might go 1-11. Well, and then they beat North Carolina, and you're like, well, they may run the table. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, hey, seriously. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then you have to you lose at Clemson in a close game, and then you get the flu. And now you, Miami's got uh, Van Kozar coming in. <laughs> Kozar, that's, Zach that's my favorite one. That's my favorite one, too. You guys remember when Sam Howell decommitted and before the great Alex Hornibrook committed, there was talk that Willie may let Travis Jay get some run at quarterback since he obviously can't play defensive back. <laughs> Can we float the idea out there again, especially if Travis is still out? It would be reminiscent of Anquan Bolden in the Sugar Bowl. Love the show, fellas. So, Anquan Bolden, the Sugar Bowl, throws a dime. Yeah. It's dropped. We know who dropped it. Yeah. We all remember uh, the yeah, name. I don't want to re- revisit yeah. this, but I had a scout turn to me and say, does he often drop passes like oh. that? And I go, oh, oh, oh yeah, buddy. <laughs> it yeah, goes was, back to my favorite, and I've said it before, but my buddy, uh, when everybody thought Adrian McPherson threw the NC State game, oh, yeah. my buddy's like, well, then Talman was getting a cut, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he dropped a few. I, th- I don't think he threw it. He just had the under. By That's be- why I said Adrian. My best. That but it was the best. It was NFL scout sitting right there. Yeah. He's like. Does he always? Oh, because he can run. Oh, yeah. He's got good. He's got good size. And it was a dime that Anquan. That's a great throw. throw. That's a touchdown. That's a great throw. That was the number two or three team in the country. That was a great throw. Oh boy, that was a toughie. And that's also the weekend that I did a pregame show that featured one of my favorite moments in history, which is poor Eric Blown being groped by a stranger right in the middle of a segment. Really? Oh, it was unfortunate. Female or male? Male. And it was oh, like Ira and uh, Pasadena. Oh, my guy, Javier. Javier. Javier just groping folks. It was something. Really? I mean, yeah, he was trying to get by, and Eric's kind of a big guy. I was going to so say. The guy put his hands on Eric's hips <laughs> and crossed the wrong way forward. Oh. And, and I was in the middle of broadcasting, and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> it was <laughs> awesome. My man was just right up <laughs> on it trying to get by. Watch, watch out could, with that mic. You could see Eric going, Jesus. Yeah, he's <laughs> being, being jostled about. It was one of my favorite moments ever. I couldn't keep it together. We had to go to break. I was That's just awesome. like, holy mo- and I don't think my Travis, partner just got molested. I don't think Travis J will play quarterback, but we are all in favor of him maybe moving to that side of the ball. I think we're all in favor of that. See Somewhere. what happens. Somewhere. Doing yeah. something yes. other than what he's been doing. Yes. It's Seminole Headlines, <laughs> 93.3 Real Talk Radio and War Chant TV. 
What's important when shopping at a gun store? Let's start with a friendly and knowledgeable staff. Then add top-notch service, great selection and pricing, and a personal shopping experience only found at a locally owned and operated business. At Red Hills Arms, they're right on target. While other gun stores come and go, Red Hills Arms remains Tallahassee's go-to local gun store for all your firearms needs. Stop by today and get welcomed in my family. Our partners at ISF know you want to do amazing things. You have big ideas and goals for the future. For over 40 years, ISF has focused on solving the future for state government through strategy, process, and technology. As a national management and IT consulting firm, ISF has the expertise to transform strategies, refine processes, and implement solutions to lead you in today's changing environment. ISF, your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. This is Patty Wilson. Oh, I'm sorry. We're ready. <laughs> He's recording. I, why are you always saying your last name? I it's Patty and Scott. Everybody I knows don't know that. Patty and Scott. I don't know. This is Patty Wilson. What this is? I am Patty Wilson. <laughs> what is the idea behind said promo? It's for Patty's Playhouse. We're on Patty's Playhouse Saturdays at 11. Tune in. That's stupid. Just tune in. Saturdays at 11. Patty Wilson, Patty's Playhouse. House talk with a happy ending. Each and every time. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeff, founder of Witch Witch Superior Sandwiches, and I'm here to tell you about our signature witch, the Wicked. Why call it the Wicked? Some say it's wicked tasty, some say it's wicked large. One thing's for sure, with oven roasted turkey, ham, pepperoni, roast beef, and bacon, as well as your choice of three cheeses, it definitely takes you from wicked hungry to wicked happy in just a few wicked good bites, only at Witch Witch Superior Sandwiches. On Wednesday, the Wicked is just five bucks. Five meats, three cheeses. Five bucks. This is Dr. James Ryan Finn from Finn Chiropractic, and the holiday insanity is upon us. It's Halloween, it's Thanksgiving, it's Christmas, it's New Year's, and oh my gosh, Valentine's Day is around the corner. Well, don't wait to Valentine's Day to give yourself some love. Come to Finn Chiropractic. Let us get to the cause of your headaches, neck pain, back pain, numbness, and tingling before the holiday insanity takes its toll. Contact us at finchiro.com. That's F-E-N-N-C-H-I-R-O.com because the chiropractor loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. If you're worried about your hard-earned dollars becoming worthless or your 401k or IRA losing value, now is the time to move into gold. No, not gold or silver stocks, but real gold and silver you can actually hold in your hands. How do you get real gold and silver? By calling Oxford Gold today at 833-600-GOLD. The Oxford Gold Group will teach you everything you need to know about owning real gold and silver. It's a lot easier than you think. Call the Oxford Gold Group right now at 833-600-GOLD to get your free gold and silver investment guide. Put your savings and retirement accounts into something real, like gold and silver. Get your free Oxford Gold Group investment guide today and learn how easy it is to have real gold and silver delivered to your home or how you can have real gold and silver in your retirement account. Don't sit back and watch your savings and retirement accounts suffer. Now is the time to make your money work as hard for you as you did for your money. So do this. Call the Oxford Gold Group right now, today, 833-600-GOLD. That's 833-600-G-O-L-D. Life is stressful. Dinner shouldn't be. That motto is why Register Sausage has been doing business in the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. A proud sponsor of Seminole Headlines, Register Sausage always provides the best southern smoked sausage to over 140 grocery stores and restaurants throughout the southeast. Headliners have discovered the Register's difference. You can too. To find a store that carries Registers near you or to buy directly, head to RegisterMeats.com. That's RegisterMeats.com. Register Sausage. Yay, sausage! Seminal Headlines returns now. Head to YouTube and search for War Chant TV today to catch the show live or on demand. Now, here's Jeff Cameron, Ira Chofel, and Corey Clark. Gentlemen, thanks as always for providing top conversations about our beloved Knowles. This is from Steve. It's Miami week, so what will Corey do to celebrate our impending victory? Mm. Ooh, so yeah, what are you going to do if we win this one? Uh, I guess an Irish car bomb. There is you that, go. Is that That's something I can do? You By can the do way, that one. Yes. somebody, Yanala, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but uh, tweeted me the recipe, the link to the recipe for the Irish car bomb. It's good stuff. Oh, hell no. Well, uh, let's, uh, go ahead and read it. Read it. shot of a... Uh, it's got Bailey's. Yeah. yeah Bailey's is good. You no, know, it's because, it, man, one time I got tricked into doing a cement mixer. Yeah. Well, is, that's different. I mean, that, that's well, that. I, I yeah, can never get that out of my mind. Well, this isn't that. So Bailey's is good. Don't be a baby. Don't be a baby. Come on, buddy. Whiskey and Guinness. 
Yeah. No, man. Come on, Guinness man. is gross. No, Guinness is delicious. Guinness is disgusting. No, you're wrong. Oh, on no, so man, many I levels. tried it. It's the I don't, worst. No, we're doing this together. No. I'll wear some, uh, maybe I'll wear some jewelry in honor of beating the Canes for the next show. <laughs> okay, I'll just, like I'll it. be de- decked out in jewelry. Decked out in okay. jewelry. Marlon writes, okay, boys, it's Miami Hate Week, and I'm making the eight hour drive from Miami. Let's and a go. van full of canes. Come on, Marlon. Love you, Marlon. Please give me the good news and tell me Jordan's going to play and that we're going to shut down baby Jim Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> tell me our pass rush will make it difficult or even that our special teams can make the difference in this game. Hope well, to see hey. you all at the happy hour event. Ultras will be on me. Who is that, Marlon? It's Marlon, yeah. All right, Marlon. Uh, well, welcome. Get up here. Um, I can't say they're going to shut down baby Jim Kelly. But Jordan Travis will probably play, right? Don't oh, you yeah, think he's tired? He's going to yeah, play. play. He'll play. He'll play. Um, yeah, they, man, they got to the pass rush. And then here's the problem, though. It's like Miami will, they'll bring it, they'll leave seven in the block and just think you're not going to be able to cover their three or something. Because they're not afraid to just throw the ball up to Rambo. Yeah, but it came to the tight end. And, and, I mean, to go make a play. So <laughs> he's due to make a play. So your like secondary, a- <laughs> I don't doubt the pass rush is going to be good, but man, the secondary's got to play a lot better than it has. You should just say, but Akeem Dent, man, I, you know, look, there. he's trying. He does uh, start at a different position. He's trying. made some plays. He's made some how, tackles, but he. You just, think the effort was great on that? No, that was not great. I don't know how you how you look at Jermaine Johnson and Keir Thomas and Kalen Deloach with an effort like that. Don't you think that? I mean, and, and Fuller talked about a little, a little bit about it yesterday, but I just think the way the defensive line plays and how hard they play. Jermaine Johnson's running sideline to sideline, and yeah. Keir Thomas is getting held and still mm-hmm. getting sacked. Mm-hmm. And then you put on the film and you see that. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough to uh, that's tough to excuse away, and it's tough for a teammate to be cool with. Kyle writes, hey, guys, thanks for the great content as always. Since Miami has stumbled into their best quarterback in 20 years, and our DBs will give up the long ball with a quickness, two over-unders for you guys, two and a half passes in the air over 40 yards on Saturday for Miami, and over-under total points of 71 and a half. So the total for both teams combined. I think seventy-one and a half is a, a good number. That's a solid yeah, number. Yeah, I'd, I'd, 30, go, I'd probably go over thirty-eight to thirty-five. Gets you over it. Yeah, I'd go. I think I'd go. Over. Well, I, rivalry games are different, though. Iris. They Sometimes are. they're harder to score. Um, I think Miami will score less than they did last year. That's something to think I'm about. I'm pulling this that's, up right now. Just yeah, for you the two hope. of you. Let's. Find, if they don't, it's, it's uh, real problematic. Be a loss. I'm leaning towards the over. The Canes don't They'll like They'll definitely to have a couple of pass plays over 40 yards, I think. I, I, I yeah. would think that's going to happen. Because they're going to take a ton of Multiple? Well, they're yeah. going to take a ton of shots. Yeah. And they're not going to get stuffed on all of them. I mean, yeah, I, mean, I, I would expect well, it. Well, Florida State's going to lose if they give up two separate passes of over 40 yards. That's a problem. Yeah. Well, look, I guess Florida's... I was taking Miami. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I just think it's going to I think it's going to be a close game, just like all of Miami's games are. Most all of Florida, Florida State, State games, games are. Yeah. A little 41 38 action somewhere in that neighborhood. like that. 09 Georgia Tech games. Go. Ryan writes, fellas, like to hear your honest assessment of the transfer class. Seems like they took a way too early commitment from Parchment, thinking he would be a clear w, uh, wide receiver one, and honestly thought Milton would be close to his old self. Didn't seem to really pursue another wide receiver or linebacker. When that lone Heisman vote comes in for Jordan Travis, I'll grin knowing that it's from Corey. <laughs> That would be funny. Oh, man. But I'd get to keep it. So I'd gr- I'd, Overall, the transfer class, I think it's a B. Yeah, because you you basically you you saved games. yourself on the defensive right. line. I mean, my and Jamie gracious. Robinson's a good player. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, um, you're right there. Listen, when you're relying on the transfer portal, you're going to struggle. There's going to be times that you just swing and miss on kids, and, and well, there's, there's a, a reason, reason they're in yeah. the portal. And right? There's a reason they were at Kansas before that. Now, and, I will yeah, I mean, say this: if they could, if they could have gotten Charles, if it, it's not like they chose Andrew Parchment over Charleston Rambo, right? Like if they could have gotten, Charleston they would have gone with they Rambo. Gone with Charles, I mean, yeah. I don't know how many other receivers. So yeah, they. I will say this. I was told during the summer they knew Parchment was a gamble, but they were they wanted speed. They yeah. needed somebody to stretch yeah. the field because they didn't have a burner. But they knew it would be a gamble, and, and it has been paid a off. And they, they clearly um, they were, they wanted a linebacker. It's not like they weren't looking for a linebacker. It's just, I guess, none appeared that were uh, They on. also thought they were going to get Destin Hill in. Well, he was, yeah. I mean, he was the best receiver in the class. Well, yeah. what I would say is you cannot swing and miss this offseason. Sure. On, on a couple of positions. Wide receiver being one of them. And yeah, you got to get some linebackers in here now. Yeah. I mean, again, the recruiting class features a lot of talented players. So I know there's only so much true freshmen can come in and do to change the team's fortune, but you are going to see a, a, a raising of the floor. And that kind of competition does elevate everybody's game. So let's hope that does, happens. Does, like, if, does Alabama or whoever, somebody that's got boosters who are not afraid to, to, Maybe operate in the gray a little yeah, bit. In the gray. Are yeah. they not calling Van Dyke? 
Like, are they not getting that word to Van Dyke? Like, hey, man. What year is he? It's a redshirt freshman. Oh, I mean, or, he was a COVID freshman, so he's a freshman. I mean, in the Leary kids, a sophomore? Yeah. And I miss Eric's donation. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate you, buddy. I Thank don't know you, Eric. I may have missed it, and I apologize. And then I see here Kevin has donated to the cause as well. Oh, and Here's, Mark. Did you mention Mark? I thought I mentioned yeah, Mark. Yeah, Mark said, yeah, yeah. he, was, he oh, wanted yeah. to commit arson. Here's to not having to watch this game on the god-awful ACC network. Hope FSU's defense shows up and shuts down Ken Dorsey 2.0, and then always get back to uh, owning the state of Florida. I, you wish he was Ken Dorsey 2.0. Yeah, this kid's world's better than Dorsey was. <laughs> this kid would have won three championships with that crew. I, I do wonder. Um, you, you, you also, I know it's on the ACC network. It's on ESPN proper. We also got RG3 in the, on the booth. So I uh, haven't heard great returns so far about that. It's been a tough. As it, he's not doing a great job. Yeah. From what so. I could tell, and I heard this from somebody else, and I caught a little bit of one of his other games. He actually can have a clever, but he's trying so hard. No, yeah. That's the problem. And so it's like he's trying to be funny after hey, every. He's trying to be. There's room to get better. Right. Corey would give up on him right now. Uh, there's Corey no room for growth. That'd right. be the end of him. I think we but, know. We but, see <laughs> the seeds. He's done. He can't play. Eight weeks into his yeah, broadcast. He can't broadcast. Career. This is yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. It's a wrap. James Wright, shout out to the women's soccer team who took home another ACC championship. Glad one of our football teams is amazing. Yeah, that's true. They are amazing. They eight, eight, for eight, eight of 11, right? But I think they're eight. They've been in the finals right. eight times and won it all eight times. Every time they're in the finals, they've won. And remember, this is the coach that cared so little about the ACC tournament that he didn't send his starters that one year and got fined. And then the next year they won it, and he probably won't appreciate me telling the story, but they won it, and he cared so little about the ACC tournament. They got on the bus, and everybody's like, where's the trophy? And they had left it in the they locker left room. left it there? Because he's it's, like, I'm he, trying to win national he's championships. He's trying to win national championships. Parts, but I think now you have to appreciate it because – I mean, well, it's two, oh, it's lots two of years in a row that they beat number one in the championship game. Yeah, yeah. and the, in three of the four nat, number also, one I'm seeds are ACC. ranked number one ahead of Florida State. That's not what you do. I know. They're, well, they, well, they learned their lesson. lesson. They learned every, their lesson, didn't they? But, I mean, the ACC is incredible. They're better at soccer than SEC is at football by right. a wide margin. Are you, uh, are you getting any Twitter questions? Uh, no, but I will. I'm going to get there. I, I actually have a Facebook have, feel to them. I actually have seven yeah, or eight. Yeah, like well thought out, <laughs> great questions. I got seven or eight I'm going to get to from Twitter that I pre-scouted. Oh, nice. Oh, I, oh, I like that. little pre-scout. Okay. I'm doing Good, my job. Man. I'm here right. for you. Miami week. Yeah, here yeah, we go. It's Miami I'm, week. I'm locked in. Let me get these two in real quick, and then we'll run on over to Twitter for Ira. Gator writes, uh, Gator Kirk writes, what would you be willing to give up for a year to guarantee a victory this weekend? Hmm. So it obviously has to be something you care about. Like, I'd give up uh, stubbing my toe. For a year, right? That doesn't, you know. Wow, that's a tough. One. For a win over Miami, would you give up? I mean, man, it's what's it make them four and six? I, I don't no, know. No, but it's a win over Miami. Big, I know it's a, a big, big deal. deal but it's, I mean, I would give up. Uh, Alaskan king crab legs. I really how, like Alaskan you, king crab legs. How much you eat in Alaskan king crab? I crab treat legs. myself here and there. I like a good treat Alaskan yourself. king. Yeah, I would do. Would you give up? Uh, I'm trying to think. Like, I think I might give up so. the, because I've been on a truly like a truly white claw kick lately. You've got some issues. I might give up ultra. The softness of this man I, knows no bounds. Maybe I'd give up I, ultra and I could just drink Bud Light. And truly. I do like that you're honest about your. Oh, that's it's the most amazing thing in the world. I turned on yeah. the happy hour the other day, and you were and I saw you hold up the drink, and I turned off the happy hour. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Gene. It's yeah. unhappy hour. You're like, really, my man's out here. By the way, truly? so I uh, I told you guys this. I actually got to hang out with Sa the great Sammy Smith. You should reach your hand up next time and go Zima. As well, Zima I wish they had here, Zima. Yeah. <laughs> you guys out and, uh, of the Zima. Can I get a wine cooler? I'm cool with. I'm secure enough in who I am. But I was yeah. telling Sammy Smith, or Obviously. we were telling Sammy Smith. I was. It was cool to hang out with him about you doubting me running the. 40 oh and under five. This is, does this come up with everybody? No, you meet? well, you unreal. Met him for the first time. Stephanie Stephanie had let me brought it up. I was trying running. to explain to Sammy what an athlete was. Oh, okay. I was like, okay, I know you're talking about running the four by one with Dion, but here's what I did. And I, I explained to him that I ran it like a. I bet uh, he loved that story. Well, he's like, wait, at 2 a.m.? I was like, yeah. And how many? It was like the Leon track. And then I went and formulated the time because we were, I was running 40 meters, not 40 yards. And he's a track guy, so he understands what I'm right, talking about. Sure, the difference. Sure. So, uh, yeah. So, I, I mean, I. I don't have many regrets in life because that's not how I live. But one of my <laughs> main, one of my, one of my biggest regrets <laughs> He's is, always moving forward, is not saving that text from well, you, you at know, five in the morning. You didn't know Twitter would be a thing probably. That was 2008. Texts, the text he sent me at 4.35 in the morning. After I'd done the formulations. Like, buddy, I, just, I was just clocking a 4.82. Here we go. Nathaniel writes, do Alex Adkins training technique by chance include smashing the fingers of our sinners snapping hands with a hammer? <laughs> Why, why in the holy hell can nobody in Tallahassee snap an effing football? And the few who can quickly seem to forget how. 
Sweet Jesus. I've been an avid fan since the 1986 season. I was at the game in 86 against Miami. So here's an yeah, obligatory. Yeah, yeah. it's a good game. So here's an obligatory FMFFM, which we all know what that stands for, for that front running, fair weather, rented stadium, internet only, all Canes conference, 60 yard, little people sized IPF, five year old ass, oh, five old ass rangs, plus a Russell Athletic Bowl having ass. That's okay, that's good. a good, yeah, one. good. That's, that's a good. lot. Yeah. That's a well, I had to work a bunch in there, right there. And uh, I, I will say this: if you're gonna have a bad snap, you'd rather be on the ground than over the head. Or to the right. He was kind of keep him to the right. Sometimes. Yeah, and, and he you knows know. where Milton likes it. Right, right. He likes it in the pocket where it's just a nice ground ball just <laughs> between your legs. Get down keep there, down, make that little one bend your knees. You got time, McKenzie. You got time. Maybe McKenzie's a better shortstop than, than right. Tate. I mean, yeah, that's, it, see, that's the, the thing. McKenzie, Rodemaker's 6'5". I don't think he could do that. He might not um, have it. See, he's man, more athletic, is, though. And Nor- I mean, I, that's a tough bend to get all the way down Norvell there. Norvell and Kenny, man, they figured this out. Okay, well, who do we want to start if we're bouncing to him? Well, the shortest guy, the, the shortest guy closest guy. to the ground. Anybody the even guy. shorter that we can just throw out there? Yeah. We have a five six guy that can just <laughs> scoopity do and go. Yeah. Some of the headlines, 93 3 Real Talk Radio War Chant TV continues in a moment. Your local news now. Florida A&M University's COVID-19 vaccination and testing sites now share a location as of yesterday. The vaccination site has been moved to 2705 Wanish Way, which has been the home of the testing site for the past two months. With the move comes new hours of operations from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Saturday. The vaccination site offers first, second, and booster shots of the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines, as well as first and booster doses of the Johnson & Johnson. No pre-registration or appointment is required for either tests or vaccines. Both are free to the public. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is officially running for re-election in 2022. DeSantis announced he filed paperwork Friday to seek a second term as Florida's governor. DeSantis has been on a short list of Republican candidates to pursue a presidential bid in 2024. He defeated former President Trump in a straw poll earlier this year at the Western Conservative Summit. In all, 16 people have filed paperwork to seek the state's highest office next year, including DeSantis. This is Rachel Lene with your Real Talk 93.3 local news update. Brought to you by McEnmore Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at mcenmoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Clear skies and quiet this afternoon with a high of 76. Northeasterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Partly cloudy tonight. Lows level off around 51. Daytime highs approaching 75 tomorrow. Partly cloudy skies. Mid-70s Thursday and Friday. Chance for scattered rain showers Thursday. Chance for scattered thunderstorms Friday. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 74. Every great construction project, whether it's a new addition or renovation, starts with a plan. At Tease Park, we are excited when our clients contact us to assist with that plan. Through our team of architects, draftsmen, engineers, we can help you with your project's planning and design, potentially saving costs in the long run. Whether you have a residential or commercial project, we look forward to working with you. Call us today or visit us at teesparkconstruction.com. License number CGC 1525336. That is the smell of amazing barbecue from Highway 27 Grill and Barbecue. There's only one thing that could possibly make Kenny's amazing barbecue better, and that's an ice cold adult beverage. Now you can do just that. Pair an ice cold beer with all your Highway 27 Grill and Barbecue favorites. Highway 27 Grill and Barbecue, one mile north of Havana. Get your fill at the grill. Life is stressful. Dinner shouldn't be. That motto is why Register Sausage has been doing business in the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. A proud sponsor of Seminole Headlines, Register Sausage always provides the best southern smoked sausage to over 140 grocery stores and restaurants throughout the southeast. Headliners have discovered the Register's difference. You can, too. To find a store that carries Registers near you or to buy directly, head to RegisterMeats.com. That's RegisterMeats.com. Register Sausage. Yay, sausage! Seminole Headlines is brought to you by Register Sausage, serving the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. To find a store near you or to buy directly from Registers, head to RegisterMeats.com. That's RegisterMeats.com. Seminole Headlines returns now. Head to YouTube and search for War Chant TV today to catch the show live or on demand. Now, here's Jeff Cameron, Ira Chauffel, and Corey Clark. Said I would answer some, uh, we would answer some Twitter questions. So here you go. AT, my man writes, it's hard for many to discern whether or not progress is happening when losses continue to pile up. You guys believe the program is progressing under Norvell? And what, if any, 
tangible and intangible measures are supporting your opinions. Okay, well, yeah, we I think well, we I, all feel, three, I feel it in my plums. That's the intangible. You can feel those it. Are, those are tangible no, to you. But they're that's intangible. Tangible, right. intangible to the rest but it's of us. Tangible we can't to see me. Your plums. Yeah, but I feel so it deep difficult. down in them. Yeah. That it's, that all it's the way happening. down deep. Very in the cockles, tangible. Yeah. As tangible as it gets. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I. Well, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. I, no, I definitely do. And you know, one of the things that, you know, it's like we, one of the things we've gotten to now the last couple of weeks is like people are like, well, playing hard and being competitive—that's the bare minimum. Like you got to take the next step. It's like, it's okay, I got you. Except. Except Look around. we also saw a year ago, like that wasn't the minimum then. No. Yeah. So you have or the year before that or the year before that or the to, year before that to get to that point. And then from an execution standpoint, again, this past game, those three long, three or four long plays, we haven't seen that since like last year. I mean, even early in the season when they had some, some bus, I don't think I've seen as many, like those, that, that, those few plays to me looked like a throwback to, it reminded me of how bad the, the defense fact that has that been. felt out of, uh, exactly yeah, out of the so ordinary. It ain't yeah. good that it happened. But it shows you that that hasn't been happening. So, tangible, they uh, look. How about intangible first? They they play with a level of competency and confidence that I think is indicative of a team that is coached well. So and they play together. They play yeah, for each they other. They say for each other and all these things. So I, I think there's a. I guess the reason I would call that intangible is that there's, is. A, there's an inc- there's a confidence level that has been infused by this coaching staff. The tangible stuff are. Some of the advanced numbers, which tell you they are 100% indisputably better. Look at those plaques down there. Yeah, they might get to that top 60 defense. And look, man, the most tangible thing, the thing, the tangible thing that matters the most, besides my plums, as we all know, that's number one. Is it's intangible uh, to us, though. Right, is wins. And I get it. It's three and six. Well, but that's I, why he mentioned. As I said, though, on, on Wake Up Board Chain, it's like, man, if you have eyes, and watch sports. Yeah, you know they're better. You know they're better. They're much more physical. As a, my man, as, a, physical. as a great man once said, quit paying attention to the results and just watch learn about the process. Watch the process. It's a, more yes. about the process than the results. Well, they've only But lost. it is literally about the process right here. They are getting better. They ain't good. They're not uh-huh. close to good, but the, they're better. The problem with John James was he wanted to trust the process when he was losing to teams with less talent. Yeah, that's, that's, that's that That becomes a problem. At that point, the result does matter. That's why the Jacksonville yeah. State game is such a right. problem. Yeah. yeah, it really is the only one that where they lost as a huge favorite. I don't, they don't have a loss as an, I mean, as a favorite this year, other than that game. I mean, Probably have, not. Yeah. No, they were underdogs uh, to Clemson for sure, and they they were right there till the end. They were underdogs to NC State, and they didn't have the starting. They really should right have covered against Clemson. That was a bad. Well, yeah, that would have been like four beat. covers in a row. But that's just a bad beat, right? They were. Yeah. They yeah. No, they don't have a loss as a favorite this year at all. I can't wait to get back to those years where Florida State's favored again. That would be bad. Imagine about the that? moment that you look out there against a ranked team and Florida State's a seven and a half point favorite. Yeah. Look yeah. at this. Oh, man. You've done some things. Am I going to take the Knowles here, giving up a touchdown? You know what? Mike <laughs> might even punt. <laughs> yeah, not so worried four. about it. He, and, he he's going to get the ball back. But, and, back to, and back to his question also, the one last thing I would say about it is there's all these comparisons to, to last season, but then even to 2019, and because that team – was better offensively than than or as good or better than offensively than this team is. You could say, okay, well, Willie had to go in the right direction. Well, two things: they had a lot more better players back then. I mean, you had Tamori and Terry. Um, I mean, you had you had a oh, well, better, you had, you had a lot more talent. Let's start, let's start with there. You had a lot more talent on yeah. that team, and you hadn't had the whole upheaval of the roster. Like now, you're two years later into that changing yeah. over the yeah, roster. Yeah, no, it's it's the. I, I think when we talk about the last four years is what leads to the unmitigated disaster where you're longing for talent because you've had the exodus happen more than once. So it's stockpiling of those. You haven't replenished it like no. you would have liked. No. It's coming, though. But it's hard to do given yes. the circumstances. First year, you get here. Two weeks later, you got to sign somebody, and then, then you COVID. have a COVID year. Are there any rules, writes Mary, and we love Mary, are there any rules governing the transfer portal, or is it truly the wild, wild west? I think it can be very disruptive. And before I forget, yay Braves and, of course, yay Sausage. Absolutely, Mary. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yay Braves, indeed. She, she was. Yeah. That's not for you. That's for the Braves. No, I feel like it was, it was aimed towards me. She doesn't give a damn me. about you rooting for the Braves. I think She's she does. Fan. I think she Mary wants to say yay Mary, Braves. Mary probably is happy for Corey. Yeah, she probably she, is. She's she a kind-hearted woman. I'm just saying with the, there's no mention of Corey, and he immediately goes, yeah, thank thanks, you, thanks, Mary. Thanks, Mary. Thanks so much, Mary. That means so much. She's like, she goes, just she goes. Oh, and one more time, go Braves! And he goes, "Thank you." Thank you. That, means, <laughs> that so means more than you'll yeah, ever he's know. He's starting at short, the Braves. <laughs> that means more than you'll. Whoa! Oh, there there it goes. Oh, that was loud. Did you see that catch? That was loud. 
Rick Hans Cameron the right face. there, buddy. But no, there, there there don't appear to be any rules, right? Well, the, the big thing is you can't super slow mo that catch. Oh, that we're gonna have yeah, that'll be the happy hour. Athleticism that just occurred there. Plays of the day, yeah. Sports Center top ten. Hell of a play. This thing about took out my teeth. If you had been the receiver on fourth and four, I'd have made that catch. You would have made that catch. Yeah, and I know how important through. it is to make that catch. Yeah, um, that's a big deal. <laughs> the uh, yeah, the the only real big thing is you can't they can't contact you until you go on the portal, and so they've there's been a couple of kids throughout the time at Florida State who've started like kind of talking to schools. And those schools are calling FSU saying, hey, this kid's not even in the portal, but he's reaching out. I, you know what I'd do? I'd hang up on him. I don't give a damn. <laughs> hey, get a hold of your own. What do you want me yeah. to do? Hey, this guy's reaching out. We've so got you, interest. You yeah. uh, be in the. What are you going to do about it? Tell the NCAA? Ooh, Ooh so they're going to come get us. <laughs> <laughs> you can't directly Child. talk to the kid, but yeah, they could call the high school coach or something like that. Or your, yeah, your yeah. parents, right? Yeah. I mean, you could do, there's a lot of avenues to go. Basically, it is kind of the Wild West. Yeah. It's just, like the Wild West had share. They have sheriffs out there, Ira. Yeah, but they just but what did they shot do? people if they were angry. Yeah, you yeah you still got to roll in with guns yeah. and just have duels in the streets. Wyatt Earp wasn't like the nicest guy in the world. My man just decided he didn't like some of those other dudes and shot them. Yeah, that's how that went down. Yeah, yeah. what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? I'm Wyatt Earp. What are you gonna do, John I'm Ringo? Shoot your ass. Yeah, yeah, you do nothing. Can can, can we, Corey and I? I take don't know. I don't even know what to do. I don't even know what to do. He can he read questions while he <laughs> does this. <laughs> Jason writes, hi, guys. Love the show. Any more buzz on which QBs FSU has reached out to in the portal? So this is where everybody's head's at. They're right to have their heads in the portal. Yeah. Everybody should be looking intently JT at that Daniels, damn portal. maybe? Maybe JT, JT Daniels? Daniels? You gonna, you gonna, or Stedman you Stewart, whatever his name is. Stetson what? Bennett the fourth. Yeah, I don't want Stetson, Stetson Bennett, Bennett the fourth. Bennett the fourth. <laughs> I don't want third? his ass. You take the third, though. He's... Read who just gave us money and say thank you, because okay. I can't while I'm doing this. Old Kevin Saldana. Thank you, Kevin. Good Kevin Saldana. Good work, Kevin. Appreciate you, baby. Do you have a comment? Can you read it? I can read it now that I've got a hold of this mic, so it's not oh, crushing me. Oh, look at you. I think My you're... eyesight's so bad, I can't read it from here. When the Noles he... win Saturday, yeah, there you go. I'm for Ira and Corey chain. finding out how hard it is to steal that stupid turnover chain and wear it for the post-game wrap-up. Oh, that would be good. Man, that wouldn't be bad, Ira. Do they, they, so they still do the turnover away. chain? They have a new one. They got rid of the one that looks like a gun. Like last year. The oh, State right, Florida, yeah. They've got a new one this year. What does it look like? A knife? I can't remember, man, but it's a uh, pickaxe. It's uh no, the, man, you're struggling over there. Can we go to a break soon? We're, no, we're, man, we're, about, to, we're about this 13 wait, minutes wait left in the show. Thing. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. What do you want me to do? But uh, yes, that would be awesome if we had our own turnover chain. We we should. We should. Again, I think maybe for the wrap up show, I'll just wear a bunch of jewelry. I get all of Stephanie's jewelry and Can Aslan's it, jewelry. What like, you know, like they, the coaches or president, university of presidents would have like bets. Like Florida's president would, Florida State's president would have a better yeah. BC's uh, bet president, like a hundred right. oranges, Maine against lobster some, yeah. or something. Chowder, yeah. yeah. Could could like if uh, Coburn or the new president McCollum, like if they bet something for the Cocaine? turnover chain, something for the turnover Cocaine. chain. Cocaine. That's the only thing Miami would be interested Miami's in. Miami's like, well, yeah, let's let's go. Like, let's okay. Get it well, on. how about like orange? No, no, you said cocaine. Right? Yeah. You cocaine. <laughs> Okay, what are we getting? What's what's Tallahassee going to give back? No, uh, the cocaine in exchange for the the, the, the turnover. The turnover oh, the chain. turnover. That's oh, the I see. Yeah, oh, yeah. I got you. Yeah, if, I, if I we, do that in a heartbeat. If we like, win, really? If yeah. we win, we get the turnover chain. If you win, you three get, kilos. You get, three the, keys. you get the cocaine. You get three keys. They may end up turning that down because they'd say, "Well, we got plenty of coke down here, guys. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're, we're the capital. That doesn't move the needle. needle. Yeah, we three don't have to worry about that. You got any fentanyl? Come back, wrap it up momentarily on some of the headlines. There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. This is Kyle, service manager from Barano Heating and Air. Schedule an appointment from your mobile device to learn about our total comfort service program. With guaranteed same-day service, 15% off necessary repairs, and $25 berry bucks to use towards air filters and other products. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Barano Heating and Air. Any day, anytime, anywhere. Online at baranoac.com. Quarter license, CAC 1816-186. If you weren't the owner of Gordo's and all those wonderful restaurants, Eddie, what would you be doing? You know, I, I think I'd want to be a, want to be, I don't know what I'd want to be, a boat captain or a cowboy. 
You know how to use a, a lasso? No. You'd have to do that if you were a cowboy. Yeah, but I've never even been on a horse. It's not my place to be on a horse. I agree. And the horse thanks you. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Parker Brothers Roofing says don't play games with your roof. Protect your home and your family. The Parker Brothers tell you the truth. We'll fix your roof because it's what we do. With quality and take it to your pride. Getting your roof inspected can save you thousands of dollars in the event of a major storm. Not to mention the peace of mind knowing that you and your family are protected. At Parker Brothers Roofing, we make it easy with free estimates, affordable financing, and professional installation every time since 1995. Call 656-8112 or visit parkerbrothersroofing.net today. Parker Brothers Roofing, professional every time, stay safe and dry inside. Many orthodontists in Tallahassee can straighten a smile, but at Birch Orthodontics, they're dedicated to providing the finest care possible. The experienced and friendly staff is trained in all of the latest techniques. So whether you need standard treatment like braces or Invisalign, or you have a more complicated case requiring extra attention, Birch Orthodontics is here for you. Set up your free consultation today by visiting birchorthodontics.com, B-U-R-C-H orthodontics.com, or call 850-877-1692. At Birch Orthodontics, they create beautiful smiles that last a lifetime. Seminal Headlines returns now. Head to YouTube and search for War Chant TV today to catch the show live or on demand. Now, here's Jeff Cameron, Ira Chofel, and Corey Clark. All right. Now, this is going to be a rapid fire ending. You're going to get a boatload of commercials at the end of this hour because this oh, thing just fell on my face a second up time. Standing up. Just fell on my face for the second time. Yeah, that was up. a hard one. That, that got one you. hurt. That one got you pretty good. Uh, I was able to get the left, the right hand in just a little bit, but this is this is not ideal, guys. We've got broken mics all through here. Thomas writes, FMFFM. We know what that means. 17 sacks so far against Van Dyke. D1 needs to feast. Thick, warm <laughs> sausage for me. <laughs> okay. All, all right. right. I'm going to stop reading that. Nice. Agreed. Uh, you good, do need sacks. You need good, to put pressure on good, the quarterback. Good one. Uh, Jeff, what homework assignments would you give all of us uninformed dumbass fans? <laughs> How much have you have you gotten much grief about that? Because on the Sunday Smash, people that didn't watch the Sunday Smash this week, Jeff was uh, a little fired up about the, the fans who have been killing this coaching staff. I just... Okay, well, we're not going to go down that again. But I, I got some grief, but not a lot. I had a bunch of people say, you're right, Cameron, keep it going. Right. Yeah, so a lot of people were frustrated. Well, he hears what he wants to hear. You know, that's, we all do, buddy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just like when somebody says, oh, go Braves. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you so Mary. much. Thank that, you so that, much. That it touches so the heart, me, Mary. <laughs> warms the cockles. Uh, one quick one for Ira. Is English better than Tate in practice? Is he? Uh, that's actually a good question. Is he better? I mean, no, earlier this year, I, I don't think he was, but no, I haven't been to as many of you been. I don't think he's better. I think, uh, as good. Well, it's just, no, I don't think he's better. He, he's, he's a little bit more, uh, kind of like, a, he's got like a little bit more Milton to him in the sense of like the, the, the old Milton. He can move around, makes some mm. like creative plays. Tate's more of a drop back passer. Um, I don't want to sit back down because I got to adjust my mic and everything. Well, stand up. Just, You're just good. Leave the mics be, buddy. We've got about three minutes and then and Matthew's going to hit a commercial festival. That's you're gonna, you're you guys tired are, of holding that. You guys are going to get bonus commercials. I, I mean, this is hazard <laughs> pay. Hurt. Yeah, that's hurt. hazard pay. I've had my face hit, my elbow hit, my wrist hit by this damn Is that mic. starting to wear on your arm a little bit? No, you wouldn't the, have lasted not long the, in not Abu Ghraib. <laughs> Abu Ghraib would have been tough for <laughs> you. Been a toughie. I think it was tough for them. <laughs> yeah, it seemed yeah. like it. <laughs> it was less than an ideal situation. Let's see if we can get one more. I got most. Uh, How about Twitter? Uh, you, I don't think you got a lot of Twitter. I don't have a lot of Twitter, but. It's tough to manipulate this right now. Let's see if I can get back over to Twitter. Anyhow, you know what we should do? Do we think there's a, a chance in the fourth quarter here we're celebrating that Florida State ends this losing streak? Yeah, right. man. It's going to be close either way. I mean, it's going to be it's going to be back and forth, man. It's going to be back and forth. Also, tonight begins college basketball. Not for Florida State. They start tomorrow against Penn at midnight. Check that. 9 p.m. Essentially at midnight, well be, yeah. Right? But tonight, college basketball starts. There are a lot of games throughout the country. Teams that Florida State will be facing, and uh, you get a little sneak peek on those teams. So I'm kind of I'm kind of excited about that, and I'm actually really excited about this basketball team. I enjoyed that exhibition. They got backcourt quicks now, and they can shoot. Yeah, yeah, they might be the best shooting team they've had. 
Um, so yeah, hopefully they'll uh, they'll take care of Penn. I think the last time they hosted a uh, Ivy League school to start a season, they lost to Princeton in triple overtime, but still ended up winning the ACC that year. I'm going to give you this really quick. Elon's at Florida. FSU plays Florida this Sunday. Uh, Bur- Purdue is playing Bellarmine, but we play Purdue on November the 30th. Lafayette takes on Syracuse. What is this, like probables for starting pitchers? You Listen to me, we take Jeff on Cameron? Syracuse. I'm letting everybody know why you could tune into oh, these other right. teams. Yeah. We, we play Syracuse December the 4th. Uh, South yeah, Carolina, upstate at South Carolina. We play the Gamecocks uh, in Rock Hill, South Carolina, December the 12th. Mm. Dartmouth at Boston College. Of course, we play BC in the Conti Forum. Bucknell against NC State. We've got uh, NC State and Raleigh in January. It's a weird end of the show. You you're, the you're doing what you're doing and reading off basketball stuff. I was just been looking at his I'm phone for three minutes. I'm trying to find some Twitter questions. He's texting friends. Just listen, man. These people, that my, my, my people on Twitter, mm. your people took on Twitter. their time to ask us questions, and we're just disregarding because I we had feel a, like, an equipment uh, malfunction. What happened? Is your Twitter not open up? Well, no, I found it. But like, you just didn't know, like any of the how questions? How do I choose? How do I choose? Oh, there are so many. Well, they're also yeah, good. Also well, good. So welcome to my just quandary. don't choose Every any week. of them. Yeah. I gave you a coup. Go ahead and read one. It's like when Meryl Streep was like, just take them both. Oh, yeah. It's Sophie's Choice. What are we going to do? Choose your daughter or your son. Well, just take them both. I don't want to choose. He's got one. Here's the final one. NYK FSU CPA asked, hey, guys, love the show. That's why I picked this one. Hey, guys, love the show. I know this team has improved from last year. Are we ACC level good at any position? Jimbo, put, line, yes. Jimbo put his focus on getting grown ass men. Where does Norve- Norvell need to focus? And do you believe he can bring in that kind of talent? Yeah, I think this recruiting class coming in, if they sign, is proof that he can bring in that kind of talent. This class that he has with the potential to add to it, including from our guy Marvin Jones Jr., right? I mean, if that happens, oh, man. dude, they've got that's a legit top 10 class. And that would show he could do it. A and B, they're bringing an influx of really good players at m- a multitude of positions. Didn't love seeing Marvin Jr. on his Alabama visit, decked was, out in Alabama did, stuff. Didn't, didn't like fine. that. Fine. Maybe you can call little... when you're talking to Sammy next time. Yeah, yeah. call we, Marvin. Can we get this done? Well, I don't think senior. they played together, so they're, they're yeah, not I a think great familiar. Probably, and I think they've heard of I'm each sure other. Sure, they've heard of each other. <laughs> yeah, I think they've heard of each other. But also, like he could have been impressed with that Alabama game. Oh, they were right. awful. Should have lost to LSU. Should have lost to the great Max Johnson. Man, if, if only man. he'd been here. Yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. So Max would bring with him not only a skill set needed at quarterback, but also his brother, the tight end. And we know we don't have any tight ends, so this no, is no. That's a not true. They one, have eleven baby. tight ends. But on this on this topic, <laughs> one though, second play, Corey. right? One more element to this game that's important it is a huge recruiting weekend. Come to wordchat.com. There's plenty mm. of coverage. Michael's got the whole list of all the guys who are visiting. That's they have a lot of right there, a lot of official and unofficial visitors for this game. A lot of big time guys are going to be there. They kind of rolled the dice for that Notre Dame game. It worked out well for them. See if they have to, here. They have to have a good game. By the way, the Navy reason. takes on Virginia at the JPJ. We'll be playing them in February. He's okay. relentless. Yeah, I'm gonna make you- <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like this new segment of Seminole Headlines. <laughs> I just wanted you to know okay. there's a lot of games on tonight. I get the uh, future I opponents. Just, you'll be checking <laughs> Great, out, buddy. Man, get awesome. back to Atlanta in time. I want you to <laughs> I see will, these games. I will. I will. I'm excited. Maine's at Virginia Tech. Florida State plays Virginia Tech January 29th. If you're looking for dinner before that <laughs> game tomorrow night at 9 o'clock, Horizons Bar and Grill up at Bannerman Cross on Thomas Road. It's a tell good place him, for brunch, him, too. I went tell, there on Sunday. Tell Mike and Kyle we sent you Horizons Bar and Grill is the place to be. Tell them Mimosa. Tell them Corey mimosa? sent you, and you get, I think, your next two visits are free. All, two Everything. visits? Yeah, two, you get two. two visits for free, and all anything the you want. Free? All the food, all the beer. You got to tell Corey sent you. <laughs> what though. if you said you wanted a steak and lobster, and they said, sure, it's free. It's all Corey. free. I mean, I'm not, just, I'm not mixing words. I'm not mincing words Did you have a mimosa? No, I don't drink mimosa. It's the kind of fruity drink you would love. I figured I actually like mimosa. I was going to say, you just have to drink Zima. That's Come it. on, man. The no, only, and no they're the only ones in town who have You it. guys have a lot of viewers and listeners that like Truly, that like White Claw, and you're just <laughs> pooping on all of them. Yes. It's called them not men. You are men. Because no, and women. No, no, no. I was just about to say the women who love those drinks are going to listen <laughs> we, to this show either way. Can we break it down on team? <laughs> no. We're, that thing's going to hit him <laughs> in the face. <laughs> all right. Good job, Matthew. Thanks to all of you. Sorry we're breaking a little early here because I'm tired of holding this mic. It's freelancing. Yeah, that's Good work, tough, Corey. Man. Good work, Ira. Bye, everybody. Good old.